has to say. Yeah, it was fiery. And then Britney Spears' bid to remove her father from her conservatorship was rejected by the judge overnight. We're going to fill you in on what's next for her and this ongoing battle for her freedom. Plus, you're going to love this one. Chanel checked out the hottest new dance trend. They're called Daybreaker Parties. You dance with the sunrise, and you're going to see how much fun they had. And I bet you maybe you'll go check one out for yourself. They're all over the country. I wish we had gone to that, actually. And six foods, guys, to stock up on for healthy hair, skin, and nails. I need them. I need them now. Oh, I need them. I need them all. But you're going to have to wait because it's time for Today, Today in 30. 30. We do begin in Pennsylvania where Bill Cosby is a free man in his own home this morning following that stunning decision by the state Supreme Court to throw out his sexual assault. We will talk to the special prosecutor in the Cosby trials in just a moment. But first, NBC's Stephanie Gosk has more on the decision and reaction to it. Hey, Steph, good morning. Hey, Hoda, good morning. Bill Cosby's waking up here at his home for, his, for the first time in over three years. His record is clean. He cannot be retried on these charges. His legal team is calling that justice, but prosecutors and accusers say it does not change the underlying facts of this case. Nearly three years after the iconic comedian was sent to prison, Bill Cosby is now back home, a free man. His conviction thrown out. We love you, Mr. Cosby! The 83-year-old looking frail, no, wait, wait, no, wait. speaking out for the first time in a radio interview. This is for all the people who have been imprisoned wrongfully, regardless of race, color, or creed. In 2018, a jury found Cosby guilty of three counts of aggravated indecent assault against Andrea Constant, a former Temple University employee. Constant testified that Cosby drugged and sexually assaulted her at his home in 2004. He has always maintained the interaction was consensual. After the verdict, Constant described the alleged encounter on Dateline. My mind is saying, move your hands, kick, can you do anything? I don't want this. Why is this person doing this? But on Wednesday, Pennsylvania's highest court threw out that conviction, saying Cosby's due process rights were violated when he was charged. That's because when Constant first came forward, then District Attorney Bruce Castor decided not to charge Cosby criminally. Cosby later gave testimony in a civil lawsuit brought by Constant, thinking he could speak freely and not incriminate himself. In that deposition, Cosby admitted he had given quaaludes to women he wanted to have sex with. Mr. Cosby, anything you want to say? But in 2015, a new district attorney used that same testimony to charge the comedian Cosby, with sexual assault. The state Supreme Court calling that an affront to fundamental fairness. Prosecutors on the Cosby case disagree. Me, none of these promises, alleged promises, were in writing and none were approved by any court. More than 60 women have come forward with allegations against Cosby, ranging from groping to sexual assault to rape. Cosby has denied all wrongdoing. Many of those women, shocked by the court's ruling, emphasizing the decision is based on a legal technicality, not the merits of the case. Andrea Constant and her lawyers called the court's ruling disappointing. Cosby, who reigned over Hollywood for decades, drawing support from his most famous co-star, Felicia Rashad, who tweeted, finally, a terrible wrong is being righted. A miscarriage of justice is corrected. Cosby's reacted multiple times publicly. He was out here for a press conference. He called into that radio show. He's also put a, a message on Twitter. He posted this picture with a statement saying in part, I have never changed my stance nor my story. I have always maintained my innocence. Savannah. All right, Stephanie, thank you. And joining us now is Kristen Gibbons Fedden, a special prosecutor in the Cosby trials, who is now an NBC News legal analyst. Good morning to you, Kristen. Before we get into the particulars of the legal ruling, just your gut reaction when you found out that the court was vacating those convictions that you had helped to prosecute and Bill Cosby was free within a matter of hours. Honestly, I was shocked. I was in disbelief. I My co uh Co-prosecutor Stu Ryan had texted me and told me, and I was just in complete disbelief. And particularly since, again, I thought that there was no alleged agreement. We went forward. The common pleas court agreed with us. Uh, the superior court agreed. The superior, or the, excuse me, the Supreme Court disagreed. But um, yeah, I was just in total shock. 
you know, the court's ruling does not touch on the issue of guilt or innocence. It all turns on whether or not there was a valid agreement not to prosecute and whether your office needed to abide by it. But Cosby was triumphant. On the radio, he said, this is for all who have been wrongfully imprisoned, regardless of race, color or creed. Your reaction? My reaction to that statement, particularly as it is made in conjunction with his other statement, specifically the one that this is justice for black Americans, makes me sick to my stomach and absolutely disgusted. Because throughout the trial and, con and continuing on now, he is trying to exploit the thirst that black Americans, including myself, um, as, a, as a former prosecutor, have for justice in America for black and brown bodies. The other thing I want to also emphasize is that three of the prior act witnesses, Kelly Johnson, Shalon Lasha, and Lise Lot Lublin were black women, black American women. And so this was not justice for them. And to put himself in the shoes of those wrongfully convicted is just wrong. Yes, the conviction has been overturned, but the merits of the case are still in place. He was found to have sexually assaulted Andrea Constant. And yes, he does not sit before you as a guilty man. He does, however, still sit before you as a sexual predator. Let me ask you and let me play devil's advocate because the court's ruling turned on this procedural issue, but it, it was fundamental. There was a prior prosecutor who said he would not prosecute Bill Cosby criminally. Based on that, Cosby then and goes and testifies in a deposition, gives incriminating evidence, and that is then later used by a different prosecutor who says, I'm not bound by that previous agreement. The court said this was fundamentally unfair. How do you respond to that? Look, Savannah, I 100 percent respect our esteemed bench here in Pennsylvania particularly all the justices on the Supreme Court bench. But I have to respectfully disagree. And the other thing I wanna emphasize is this was a split decision. When we talk about due process rights, I think one of the things we have to go back to is to the actual testimony that was given during the habeas corpus hearing for this particular uh, issue. And during that, um, during that hearing, much testimony came out. Number one, we're not even certain that an agreement was made. Typically, when these type of non-prosecutorial agreements are made, they are in writing, they are approved by the court, and there aren't any subsequent indicia of, you know, the absence of such an agreement, such as here, where he released the press release where he said, you know, at, it, I, I, I uh, may decline charges now, but I will revisit the decision should the need arise. Well, in addition that, to that, it, uh, yeah. I, I got to I got to cut you off there because of the other breaking news we have. But um, I mean, Kristen, as you said, this was hotly litigated in the lower courts and a split decision uh, now from the from the Court of Appeals. But um, we appreciate you being here this morning. Thank you very much. Kristen Gibbons Fedden, who is one of the prosecutors in the case and on NBC News legal analyst. Thank you for your time. Now to a major decision tied to Britney Spears, controversial conservatorship that she argues is allowing others, including her own father, to control her life and fortune. NBC's national correspondent Miguel Almaguer is in Los Angeles. He's on the story again with these overnight developments. Miguel, good morning. Hey guys, good morning. This decision is a response to a request from Britney Spears in November. It's not technically a direct legal response to her emotional testimony last week, and that's because she hasn't filed a new petition since November. But it's the first movement we're seeing from a judge after that emotion and outpouring, and it's a sign of where her battle stands. Overnight, a major setback for Britney Spears, a judge denying her request to remove her father from his role as conservator, signing an order that keeps Jamie Spears in control of his daughter's finances. The court filing stating that Britney is unable to manage his or her financial resources or to resist fraud or undue influence. The decision coming after the superstar's explosive testimony last week, calling the conservatorships abusive and traumatizing. In new legal filings, Jamie Spears insists he had nothing to do with his daughter's poor treatment and is demanding an investigation into her concerns. <laughs> Since her very public breakdown in 2008, the pop superstar has been under a court-sanctioned conservatorship that has given her father and others power over her personal and financial affairs. 
During the explosive hearing last week, Spears said she had been drugged, forced to perform, and prevented from removing an IUD meant to stop pregnancy. All decisions, she says, were approved by her father. But Jamie Spears pushing back, pointing out in new court documents that control of his daughter's personal life and medical treatment isn't currently under his control. He blames Jody Montgomery, a temporary conservator who was brought on in 2019 to oversee Britney's personal affairs. An attorney for Montgomery says she's been a tireless advocate for Britney and for her well-being, also noting that decisions about marriage or family planning are not affected by conservatorship. But one expert says the rules and dynamics in a conservatorship are rarely straightforward. It's my impression that Brittany has been under this conservatorship for so long. She truly feels compelled to do what the conservator wants, or in her own words, she feels she'll be punished. Let Brittany speak! Since Brittany's testimony, there's been an outpouring of support in person, online under the hashtag Free Britney, and from celebrities, including fellow pop star Christina Aguilera just this week. Spears has thanked her fans for their support and said during her testimony, I just want my life back, and it's been 13 years, and it's enough. Stick around because there is much more coming up on Today in 30. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. America journey here in Louisville, Kentucky. Kentucky. Cleveland, reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Hey, today in 30, do you hear that? I am checking out the hottest sunrise dance party. It is inspiring people all around the world. Thank you there. Coming up. and they give new meaning to the expression, rise and shine. That's right, this is morning. Early morning. And somehow I am having the time of my life in the middle of an epic dance party on a rooftop in Brooklyn, New York. It's called Daybreaker, and what started as a single sunrise party by Radha Agrawal for a group of friends in 2013 is now a global movement in 28 cities around the world. Even Oprah is a fan, hiring the Daybreaker team to open for her 2020 vision tour. Instead of bouncers at the entrance, there's a hug committee. Instead of alcohol, bartenders hand out green juice. Drugs are strictly prohibited and kids are encouraged. And what makes today extra special, it's the first in-person daybreaker since the pandemic began. We've all felt alone and lonely. We've all been separated from each other and the human experience 
is togetherness. How important is that coming out of a pandemic, or even almost kind of still in it, but coming to the other side of it, hopefully? Everyone is on the same page of I felt alone during the pandemic. Let me now come out of my shell and peek out and see what's out there. And there's all these communities like Daybreaker waiting with open arms to welcome you. The morning starts at 6 a.m. with sunrise yoga and meditation. Inhale, lift your heels up. Soon I realized I was holding hands with a stranger for the first time in 17 months. And it didn't even hit me until you told us to grab hands and then all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I haven't felt this feeling in more than a year. Wow, that makes me tear up to hear that. To courageously come together, to courageously hold hands and practice joy, to dance on a rooftop and sunrise without any substances in your body, that to me is the greatest act of courage we can offer America and the community and ourselves right now. And my fellow daybreakers agree. It feels incredible just to see people, smell people, touch people, just be around, be around the energy. It's so nice to see people coming together and feeling safe and happy and just partying their butts off. <laughs> this is my first dance party since I had double hip replacement and I feel fantastic and I could not be happier to be here today. An energy and a connection many of us have been missing for months. What would you say to someone who they kind of want to try this, but they're a little shy, a little self-conscious? So the whole idea is this is for everyone. Let's return to the fire that we used to dance around in villages, right? Like before we separated ourselves into millennials and Gen Zs and Gen Xs and Gen Ys. Let's bring it all back together and, and return to this joyous collective community together. She's the founder of Daybreakers. What do you think is the recipe for success? And what do you think all of these people here, what does that mean? It's all about inclusivity. Everybody is welcome. Everybody here is invited to dance, to be themselves, to come as you are. This is all about coming home to the dancer in you. And every single one of you today shows welcome. To learn more about it, go to daybreaker.com slash today. And we're here to invite all of you to dance with us. Please join us to dance it up. Okay, so America journey here in Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland, reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. nice. Are you ready? Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. A huge lift is underway for one of the most celebrated cities in this country, Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. This is the greatest location in the nation. <laughs> We're having a baby. Wow. The big reveal is under the lid. <laughs> hey now. Things are looking brighter, so we want to help you find the fun in 21. The music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I can track this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press.
A very special tribute in memory of the late Princess Diana. In honor of what would have been her 60th birthday today, Diana's sons, Prince William and Prince Harry, are unveiling a statue of the Princess of Wales. It's located in the sunken garden at Kensington Palace, one of her favorite spots. And royal editor at the Sunday Times, Roya Nicka, is outside Kensington Palace. Roya, good morning. Good morning to you. So, you know, Prince William and Prince Harry, we've talked about this so many times. They commissioned the statue all the way back in 2017 during the 20th anniversary of Princess Diana's death. Um, they obviously were so close to their mother. So what is today's unveiling going to be like? How significant is it? Well, I think it's a hugely significant day, and that unveiling has just started just over my shoulder here in the sunken garden. And I think, just like you said, four years ago that was commissioned, and it's taken four years of delays. We know so much has changed over those four years between the brothers. So this is a moment that's going to be steeped in so much history, so much emotion. Um, the family have gathered. We've just seen uh, in the last half hour or so, we've seen Lord Spencer down as brother arriving in the gates just behind me for that very special half hour our unveiling um, and and soon we'll start to see the images of what that statue looks like um, and we'll start to see those first images of course that everyone's waiting to see of William and Harry together reunited for their mother. I was just about to ask you you see all those people there buzzing behind you they newly redesigned the sunken garden for this unveiling can you give us some details on that and, and why this location is such a meaningful one? Yes, well, well, the sunken garden behind me where, where this unveiling is taking place was one of Diana's favorite spots. And actually, the, the deputy head gardener here um, it, it has, has spoken about the fact that very often she would come out of the palace and come and talk to him and, and chat about the planting schemes. And Pip Morrison is the garden designer who's redesigned it. And it's been filled with more than 4,000 flowers, a lot of Diana's favorite blooms, forget-me-nots, dahlias, uh, lavender plants, uh, and roses. And the, the aim of it is, and, and William and Harry have been very closely involved in the designs for it to be a sort of calm, reflective, mm. peaceful spot for the public to come and be able to remember her. It's beautiful. And, you know, we all were watching when William and Harry were together and reunited at Prince Philip's funeral in April. Um, but since then, you know, Harry and Meghan, they've had their little daughter, Lilibet Diana. I mean, where do you think their relationship stands now? What do you expect to see today? Look, I think there's no hiding from the fact that the relationship between the brothers over the last few years has been difficult, and particularly, um, you know, this year with that interview that was given to Oprah and, and since. But I think just as we saw for Prince Philip's funeral, we saw them put on a united front. Um, we're going to see that again today. There's no doubt that the brothers understand this, this moment is too important for any rift to come, you know, publicly oh, yeah. come between them on today. So I'm sure we're going to see a united front from them both today. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly. Mutual love and respect for, sure. for their mom, for sure. Roya Nicka, thank you so much. Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Orlando, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, that's so shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Let's turn to our hair, skin, and nails. Sometimes the best solutions to our problems 
aren't found in the drugstore. They're found in the grocery store. Yeah, so NBC News Health and Nutrition Editor Madeline Fernstrom is about to show us some easy fixes for your ailments, and they are right in your own kitchen. Madeline, Madeline. it's good to see you. All right, so... I love that you're doing this, but give us, talk to us a little bit about how what you eat can affect how you look. We always think that, you know, we need creams and facials, yeah. but really the food matters. Hey, Madeline, yeah, we can't, Madeline. we can't quite hear you. Hang on. They just probably have to push a button and then we will. Uh, we're just there. Are you there? No, Try again. We don't have Okay, okay, we're, we're going to take a pause, Madeline. We want to hear you, and we know what you're saying is important. Yes. Because it always is. Could, should we go to the first question, maybe? Well, I, I think not. I think we got to wait for Madeline okay. to come back. We'll take a break, but before we go, can we just go back to, let's take another look at Kensington Palace in London as we go, uh, as we go for a quick little break. Oh, we got Madeline Okay, back? good. We've got Madeline. Hey, Madeline, can you hear I'm us? I'm back. Okay, there Madeline, you yep, go. I can hear you I fine. I think we hey, should go, we go to the first question, though, yep. Madeline. We have a, some of our viewers that have some questions about this. Let's go to Justice from Columbia, South Carolina, to see what they need help with. Jenna, well, I am so happy that it is the summertime, and I'm happy for the weather and everything. My skin is super, super dry, especially on my legs, and I just don't know what to do. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. Justice, don't want, she doesn't want dry skin and nobody does. So what, what's good do. for that? Okay, the best thing, Justice, and everyone is to add some fat to your diet because you need water hydration, but fat is sort of the overall lubricant to keep your cells uh, functioning. Skin is the biggest organ. It's all over. So add a fat like um, avocados. Here, here we go, um, Madeline. Yeah, I'm doing here we go. We're going to take a look at this. Oh, let's oh, reveal. Avocados and tomatoes. tomatoes. Why do these right. work? Two of the best ones. Mm -hmm. The avocado is a heart healthy fat. You can use it on anything. You can mash it. You can put it on a sandwich or a salad. Um, and you can use other fats like nuts. But tomatoes are a surprise because they are a huge nutrient powerhouse. And it gives you loads of antioxidants. It prevents cellular damage. You're going to have um, a bunch of vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin E, potassium. And it's easy to incorporate every day. The most All important right. thing about having food for the outside is going to be you eat it every day. Got awesome. it. All right. So we got a viewer, Michelle. She's got a problem that lots of us can relate to. Take a listen. Hi, this is Michelle from Scottsdale, Arizona. And during the hot months of the summer, my hair gets so dry and brittle. I was wondering, do you have any advice or any tips that can help solve this problem? Shall we, we see? We have a reveal, Madeline. Let's see. And the winner is okay. Ooh, almonds and ah, eggs. Almonds and so eggs. Almonds and eggs. Now, the big key here is when you have brittle or dry or damaged hair, protein is great. And one of the best proteins are eggs because they are the best digested by the body. They're full of B vitamins, especially biotin. That's really important for hair health. Remember, any small deficiencies in your diet can really be reflected in problems in your skin, hair, and nails. And especially if you say, oh, eggs, the American Heart Association goes, mm. these are great for healthy eating. One a day, seven eggs a week are going to be great. And also remember that yolk. That's going to be good. It's got a lot of antioxidants and some vitamin E, so you can't go wrong. And <laughs> almonds, one of Hoda's, one yeah. of Hoda's favorites is a top combo because it's got those healthy fats that you need for vibrant hair as well as protein. It's got two-thirds of your vitamin E. So you really got a nutrient powerhouse both with proteins in the eggs and the almonds. And they're Ma filling, too. Madeline, really quickly, let's get to our viewer, Sarah, see what she has going on. Yeah. Hoda, Jenna, I need your help. Every summer, my nails get so cracked and spotty. What should I do? Okay. Here's the reveal, Madeline. This is what Here's we do, reveal. Sarah. Mmm, raisin, raisin bran and asparagus, right. what a strange combo. And asparagus, now where does this come? Any whole grain, bran cereal is great because it's a good source, is a great source of zinc and B vitamins. Any problems with nails usually have some vitamin or mineral deficiencies or marginal ones, so bran cereal is a great choice. And the raisins are full of iron. That's so important for women's health, and a lot of women are marginally deficient. If you like liver, you can try that. The asparagus is another nutrient powerhouse. It hits all the nutrient bases. It's low in calories. It's got a ton of folic acid, vitamin A, A, C, E, K. I mean, it's a whole powerhouse of everything you need and some lesser known nutrients that you need like phosphorus and, and copper and a bunch of iron. So 
incorporate these every day. Food's not going to have that impact unless you have it regularly. But okay. any problems and these don't go away or solve it, see your doctor because it might be something yeah, else. Yeah, Madeline, these are thank all, you. These are all Great things tips. we have in our houses anyway, exactly. Madeline. Thank exactly. We so appreciate much. that. Thank you, Madeline. Be sure to join us for another big show tomorrow, including everything you need to throw for the best 4th of July party ever. Let's do it. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, gang, and welcome to Today All Day. I've had a chance to interview so many amazing people here at Today, and I'm very excited to share some of my favorite interviews with you. And over the next 30 minutes, you'll see stories on mental health, music, and a whole lot more. I hope you enjoy and maybe even learn a little something along the way. I think that there's truth in dark humor, and it, it really came. It was like, please excuse my depression. It has a mind of its own, like I can't control this. And I thought, I can paint that out in the world. Oh, I can get my voice out at a time that I wasn't being heard in my life. Within the first couple weeks, I got a message on Instagram from a kid that said, hey man, I came across your art. I tried to kill myself three times this year. Your art let me know that I'm not alone in this world. And I just want to say thank you. What did, what did that mean to you when you read that? Like what went through your mind? It brought me to tears. It was a major shift in my life because I knew that I was doing this to try and heal myself. And I hoped that it would mean something to people. I never thought that it would mean that much. You know, for a long time, I sort of suffered in silence. This series is trying to shine a light on these topics. There is no stigma to me. It's mine. Trusty, I'm so glad to have you on the show, man. Not only do I love street art, but when I found out that your story in particular intersects with mental health, I was psyched to just have you on Mind Matters. So let's just start at the beginning and tell me how you got into street art. My intention is not vandalism. I didn't start this to destroy property. I started it because I felt like my voice wasn't being heard. And I had yeah. been in the graffiti and street art scene for years. I've been photographing it for a decade and a half. In 2015, I was uh, seeing someone, it turned into a really abusive relationship. I kept putting myself second. I put someone else's emotional well-being ahead of my own, which is incredibly destructive. And within, a, God, maybe a month or so, I felt it and I knew exactly what it was. I knew that depression was grabbing at me and I've, I've sort of ridden the wave of depression throughout my life. And so I knew that I had to do something. I tried, I really tried to fight it because I was scared about slipping back into it, slipping back into a bad one. When you were out of that relationship, did things get better or? Oh, it got so much worse. It, it was, it's probably one of the craziest things I've ever been through. When did you start to realize that doing street art would be the thing that would help you cope? I was looking for things that would occupy me a hundred percent so that I wouldn't focus on my depression. I found two things. I found reading and painting. I'm a stencil artist. Hand cutting the stencils takes a hundred percent focus. You can't think about anything else. It really sort of came as a lightning strike. The first one was, please excuse my depression. It has a mind of its own. Even though I was doing something as sort of art therapy for myself, I wanted people to be able to interact with it, to basically complete the piece of art themselves. And they have. Since 2017, Trusty Scribe has painted his speech bubbles across the US, Mexico, and Europe. People began snapping photos and tagging him in their posts, creating an Instagram community with thousands of engaged followers. I really appreciate that he has the courage to put these things up for the world to see. It's so rare to see a very direct message about mental health. And it really stood out to me because of the fact that I go through mental health issues myself, being depression and anxiety. It just opened this whole new world for me. And it was, it, I felt like, well, here's somebody else that's fighting the fight with me. It has a domino effect. So if you help one person, that person is gonna go ahead and help other and another. And it kind of creates a real communal experience. And I think that's something that a lot of us throughout this pandemic have kind of been looking for, is just kind of a sense of connection with someone, something, or anything. I think one of the reasons why it resonates is because I think people understand that it comes from an honest place that the person that created the thing 
experienced that thing. I don't know if you saw the one. I don't want to kill myself one. I don't want to kill myself. I just don't want to be here anymore. What was the reaction to that one? Well, so the interesting thing about that one is the people that have experienced that, there's a knowing nod. They, they get it. People that have not experienced it, I think they find it somewhat appalling, but the beauty of it is, regardless of what side you fall on, you're still now having a conversation about mental health. And where that came from actually is, when I started really just falling into my depression, I started calling around looking for help. If you're in a really bad way, it triggers a suicide protocol. And that suicide protocol is, um, are you feeling suicidal? Do you have a means, a way, and a plan? And my response genuinely was, I don't want to kill myself. I just don't want to be here anymore. And the response I got was, well, we can maybe see you in six weeks. And I said, do you think I'm still going to be here in six weeks? And I was really fortunate. My family stepped in and they were like, just go get a therapist. I got a psychiatrist as well and was, was put on medication. And so I was being um, managed and overseen that way. The, uh, the most important thing of what I did was I reached out for help. Now you're all of a sudden in this position of like really maybe prolonging people's lives. You're actually in the business of saving lives when you set out to simply save your own. When someone speaks about their mental health journey, whether they like it or not, it unlocks the ability for other people to speak about theirs. And there's a chain reaction that ultimately is great. I've been really fortunate in that sense that when people find out who I am and what I do, they inevitably start talking about what either they're going through or what a friend or a family member is going through. It's like Fight Club, like all of a sudden, everybody's just like, oh, come on, let's, you know, you're in it too, let's talk. And like, it is like this commonality that, that, that we have. What would you say to somebody watching this right now who's struggling? Even when it feels like you're alone, know that you're not alone and that you can reach out. There are organizations or people in your life who love you and want you to be okay. It takes just a phone call, just a little bit of effort to reach out and start on that path towards healing yourself. Do you think about the future of Trusty Scribe? What is in store for it? Are there other themes that you want to tackle? Where do you want to take this? I think the word bubbles will always be there. What I would really love to do is do, uh, love is the only language I speak fluently, one in every country around the world, giant, like on the side of a building in the language of that culture. The more love you give to people, the more love you can receive back and the more love that goes out into the world, it's a ripple effect. So why wouldn't we want to spread more love around the world? Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Our Across America journey here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For anybody watching this, you know, white people uh, who care, you know, what, what, what can we do to help? I think the first thing that you guys can do is just listen, hear what we're saying and see, you know, humanity in us. Well, my grandmother used to always tell me, treat people how you want to be treated.
For a long time, I sort of suffered in silence. This series is trying to shine a light on these topics. There is no stigma to me. It's mine. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter. Darius, it's great to have you on Mind Matters, man. I, I appreciate it, man. It's, a, it's definitely a pleasure to be here. I wanted to start with this intense wave of racial and social uh, unrest this past summer. And, you know, what got you out to protest on the streets near your hometown in Milwaukee? Me and my girlfriend went to a protest and there's a guy up there talking about we're all oppressed. We all feel the hurt. And it was off the stuff with George Floyd. And to mention that this is a blonde hair, blue eyed white guy. Yeah. <laughs> Me sitting here and I just had to take it in like, no, no. And I actually went up there and I spoke um, to the crowd. Is that your personality? I mean, that takes a lot of courage. I just really wanted to be on the forefront just so I can speak my mind and just show like, we don't need people speaking for us. You know, we're right here and we're able to do these things ourselves. Impressed by his initiative, the protest organizers asked Darius to help lead other large street protests. A lot of us black people, we would still be dealing with this trauma after this ends. But this is a start, at least within the city. And it was just huge for me to be vulnerable around four to 5,000 people. It was a stress reliever. I cried in front of the crowd. It was super big as somebody that was so bottled up with so much emotions and not knowing how to release it. And it was just an awakening for myself. It was just amazing. As that evolved, how were you doing mentally and did it ever take its toll on you? Yeah, that was the whole premise <laughs> of me starting uh, Black Space. Darius teamed up with his friends, Corey Fells and therapist, Dr. Leah Knox to create Black Space, an organization that offers free group therapy sessions for communities of color. While Darius had never been to therapy himself, he knew it was what his community needed most, especially during this tumultuous time. So the idea initially started with Darius. Darius wanted to be able to have a space that he can be able to uh, gather black and brown people to be able to kind of talk about their emotions. We're in great need of mental health services for black and brown communities. We don't have affordable mental health services. We don't have many providers of color. You and Corey and Dr. Knox started Black Space, but you were also like a client. I think it was good for the people that came just to show like the people that put this together, um, they're searching for help too. I see myself in you. I understand what you're going through. And I got to a point where I told myself like, ah, I don't want to protest anymore. I want to fix within. Like, yes, we can show the world about how they should treat us, but do I even know how to treat myself? That was the premise of like, let's put, you know, black space together. Let's help out our people that's out there fighting because the same thing that I'm dealing with right now, my father dealt with, his father dealt with, these generational curses. I'm wanting to, to stop that for my own daughter. Darius first recognized his own mental health issues during a bout of depression in 2017, after losing his job and ending a relationship with the mother of his young daughter, Yanni. Until I went through my depression when I was on the verge of killing myself, I honestly thought depression wasn't a real thing. All right, me too. Like an adjective, like I'm just really bummed out. Yeah, yeah. So what you know brought me to the conclusion of I need help, I was crying in front of her and she was about four or five and she told me, daddy, it's okay. Yeah. And then I was able to see like, oh man, like I couldn't sit around and be a bystander and seeing it, it's harming my daughter. Do you take stock and take a second to sort of feel your own growth and achievement? I'm still growing. I'm not at the point where I want to be. You see, I have so many plants and I use that as a way to understand myself. If I'm off balance and I'm not paying attention to the plants around me, I know I'm not watering myself. Does anyone know what an anxiety attack feels like? Because they don't all feel the same. How many people have had them? When you talk to a therapist that looks like you, you don't really have to explain what it means to be black or brown. And you can definitely connect on a deeper level. Black Space is a therapeutic experience to be able to hopefully have everyone leave with their own personal interests in having one-on-one -on -one therapy. I'm hoping that they receive a sense of relief. I want them to know that mental illness 
should not be a stigma. We have to destigmatize it. Mental health as it pertains to communities of color, what can we do together? You know what I mean? Like if I say to you, Darius, like I'm not gonna be that white dude that stood up at the protest and pretend that I know the stripes of the black community. I can't do that, right? For anybody watching this, you know, white people uh, who care, you know, what, what, what can we do to help? I think the first thing that you guys can do is just listen, hear what we're saying and see you know, humanity in us. Well, my grandmother used to always tell me, treat people how you want to be treated. Don't let this be a trend of right now. This needs to be a, a conversation that we're constantly having with ourselves. Yeah, not a one-off. This needs to be the beginning of real dialogue. Yes, yes. And that's why uh, in the protests, one of my, my favorite chants was, uh, we are one, regardless of what we look like, uh, anything, you know, we're coming here together. We are one. one. Yep. We are one. We are one. We are one. Now I say that it shouldn't have to be called brave to talk openly about it. Like we should just be talking. We're never gonna end the stigma around mental illness until we put our names and faces on our stories. For a long time, I sort of suffered in silence. This series is trying to shine a light on these topics. There is no stigma to me, it's mine. 79 million people in the U.S. live with mental illness, to be exact. Yet when mania slaps me in the face so hard that I am left trembling in a corner, unable to slow down the hundreds of thoughts buzzing behind my eyes, I do feel like the only person in the world at that moment. And I wonder, will it ever stop? Jennifer Marshall wasn't always this brave. After experiencing back-to-back -back manic episodes in 2005, she was hospitalized and given a diagnosis of bipolar disorder. Not long after that, she began writing a blog to help process the pain she felt. So Jennifer, I'm psyched to have you on Mind Matters. Let me just start with about 10 years ago when you started your blog. Why did you wanna start talking about your own sort of mental health? I needed an outlet. I needed to go somewhere and write regularly about what I was going through. It just helped me process things. When you started to talk about that in the blog, you did it anonymously, why? because I was afraid of what people might think of me putting all that out there. I was a little bit fearful of being discriminated upon. After a year and a half of blogging anonymously, Jennifer was offered an opportunity to write about her experiences for a major media outlet. And it was at that moment where I'm like, do I want to just be a pen name or do I want to own this story? And this is me and I want to talk about it. Bipolar is a part of what makes up who I am. Then in 2013, she had a vision for staging a theatrical production where everyday people could tell their personal stories about mental health in front of a live audience. She decided to call it, This Is My Brave. This is my brave. Where did that come from? The Sarah Brella song Brave was super popular at the time, had just come out, top of the charts, you know, and I tweeted to her with my first public post and I said, Sarah, this is how big my brave is. And she retweeted me and I was like, oh my God, like this is amazing. Awesome. It is brave. It's so brave. Well, the funny thing is now I say that it shouldn't have to be called brave to talk openly about it. Like we should just be talking. This Is My Brave staged their first storytelling event in 2014 in Arlington, Virginia. A diagnosis is not a life sentence. What was wrong with me was not a flaw in character, but in chemistry. Since then, they've hosted 75 shows in 43 cities. And after that first show, what happened that made you go, okay, this was really good, I'm gonna build on this? This woman came up to me and she said, I found your blog in my darkest moment and your writing saved my life. And that's what the goal is, is to open up the conversation. During the pandemic, This Is My Brave hosted five virtual events and launched a special series focused on teens. Madarius Maximus. 18 year old rapper Madarius Maximus will be performing in This Is My Brave's upcoming national teen show. You look like an artist, man. I mean, I want to I'd sign you just like, you got the like kind of like war. What's, what's, What's the deal with the, the war paint? I was raised in Native American culture. I'm Puerto Rican and African American. So I put it on every day because I won. I, I won the battle of waking up. Left wheelchair bound after a dirt bike accident when he was 14, Madarius has struggled off and on with depression. I just wanted to do this to inspire people. Show that if I can smile, then you can smile because most people in my position, you either fall flat or you get back up and try to fight another day. 
Jennifer has fought that same fight. In 2017, she had another manic episode following the sudden death of her creative partner and This Is My Brave co-founder, Anne-Marie Ames. This time, her kids were there to bear witness. The trauma of seeing their mom sick affected them and it came out in the form of anxiety for my daughter. We got her in with a private therapist and she went through five months of therapy and wrote a book called My Mommy's Mental Illness. That's a lot for young people to take in, but also part of what we're trying to do is create a new normal process. That's not special talk about mommy, that's just talk about mom. It's life. It's we, I think every person on this planet is gonna deal with some issue of their mental health at some time in their life. Literally, when, I, when we hang up with this Zoom, like I'll feel better. Mm -hmm. I don't even know you, but like, we're sort of like brother, sister in this, in this, this thing together. And like, just talking makes you feel better. Yeah. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything, for traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. You may or may not know her name yet, but you definitely know her music. In fact, the song you're hearing, If the World Was Ending, was just nominated for a Grammy for Song of the Year. Mm. Julia has co-authored countless hits. We're talking Justin Bieber's Sorry, Selena Gomez's Bad Liar. She has written for Pink, Ed Sheeran, Demi Lovato, even Linkin Park, Gwen Stefani, and trust me, the list wow. goes on. It is her turn now. This week, Julia's highly anticipated debut full-length album comes out. We had a chance to chat about music life and, of course, mental health and a lot more. I wanna live in a world where all your At 27, Julia Michaels is much more than a new pop star putting out her very first album. She's written or co-authored over 120 pop songs. Massive hits for artists like Justin Bieber, Selena Gomez, Janelle Monet, Keith Urban, and Pink, just to name a few. She is no one-hit wonder. Her first effort as a solo artist was 2017's hit, Issues. Cause I got issues. Issues went five times platinum and earned two Grammy nominations, solidifying Julia Michaels as much more than a songwriter, but a force to be reckoned with as an artist. You're one of the most well-respected people in music, and I just wanted to say I'm psyched to talk to you about your new record. Well, thank you very much. That's very flattering, and I suck at compliments, but thank you. <laughs> her tattoos are almost as iconic as her hits, and we took a second to compare ink. I basically just want like a pinup girl with boxing gloves. Yeah, I mean, and that's awesome. Sick, and this was the last one he did. This is like. I love that. Lift it up a little bit more. There we go. That's like a Leo for my daughter, uh, London Rose. That's and beautiful. Then, what, what's tattooed on your hands? Because I love you more. I wondered what, back four years ago, what drove you to keep these songs and to perform them yourself as an artist? I had written a song called Issues. And one of them is How About a Nature. I was just like, I don't know if I 
feel comfortable having somebody sing something so intimate about me. Issues addresses her mental health struggles, but she says it wasn't easy being thrust into the spotlight. What was life like being shot out of a cannon your first time as a, a solo artist? Uh, yeah, it was pretty wild. All of a sudden I was on these stages that I wasn't familiar with, opening for people in stadiums. It was like pretty horrifying, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, I read you had a panic attack at the Billboard Music Awards the first time you did Issues Live, is that true? Yeah, I literally, I turned around, I was like, I can't breathe. I know you had issues with stage fright. How did you ever get over all of that? I remember I was doing the VMAs. I was having so much anxiety. My hands were sweating, my knees were shaking, and I looked out into the crowd and there was a girl that looked at me and she goes, it's okay, you've got this. And I just looked at her the whole time. You just locked in with her and forgot about everybody yeah. else? It's your guardian angel. So every time I would open for somebody, I would focus on the people that knew the songs. Like, oh, I don't feel so right. alone up here by myself. You know, you've written so much about that topic, mental health. There seems to be a bit of a pivot in the writing. This is about exes and lovers. You sound like a jealous girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do say in issues, I'm a jealous person. It's that has carried on. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm in a very healthy, wonderful relationship. And, you know, even though uh, I sing about love and being really happy and healthy, I still have anxiety. I still have depression. Those don't just go away when you're happy. But if the world was ending, you come over. Recently, she released If the World Was Ending with Canadian singer and now boyfriend J.P. Sachs, who wrote the song five months before the pandemic and was nominated at last month's Grammys for Song of the Year. I know that you guys came together on the track If the World Ended. How did that happen? time we ever met was when we wrote If the World Was Ending. We had our first date the next day and we've basically been together ever since. Such an awesome 2021 love story. Sounds like a cheesy rom-com. Julia and JP co-wrote two of the 10 songs on the new full-length record, Not in Chronological Order, including the lead single, All Your Exes. I wanna live in a world where all your exes are dead. I wanna live in a world where all your exes are dead, you've got a chainsaw in the art, and I wondered if you're trying to channel your inner Marshall Mathers or what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> My inner American psycho. Um, no, we, it was funny. So we were at the studio one day and he was like, you just want to live in a world where my exes are dead, don't you? And I was like, yep. Tell me to make noise that I should try to It's saying, you know, like, I love you so much that the idea of you being with somebody else before me, like, physically hurts me. The music video idea for all your exes, walk me through how that came about. I had this idea for a dinner party where I'm sort of like setting up for like all his friends and I'm like being Susie Homemaker. There was a director named Blythe Thomas that had kind of a similar idea to me. She goes, Julia, how could cool it be if all of the, the people at the dinner party were actually his exes and they were dead? And I was like, that's sick, love that. I wanna live in you ever take a second to validate like the incredible work that you've done, not just for others, but for yourself? No, never. That's a problem, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like highly insecure. I don't know if you know that or if oh. it doesn't come out my music enough. <laughs> I know, you're your boss though. You have to start to believe it. I've gotten a lot of texts from people and no, I'm not gonna name names. Come on, give me one. Give me just one. No, 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 no. Of them being like, I can't post this, but I just want you to know that all your exes is the best thing I've ever heard. I'm like, cool. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. 
our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Obviously, it turns out those risks have, have paid off. I'm sorry, I'm distracted because... Because uh, London is... London has London? joined the fray. I'm sorry, Carson. It's the London show. Yeah. Lolo, t tell, can we just yeah. see some more Lolo? Let her sit on your lap there Although, for a second. She's got it going on. Emma has go done a lovely Lolo. job of the graphics. Etta was... Slowly she was very professional. Yeah. Lolo is Etta a star. A Not to be left out. You've got to find yeah, a job for yeah. her. Come on, yeah, let's bring Etta right. in, too. You want to come in and just say hi? Oh, her hair. She's upset. Just wave in the camera, then. She said she didn't do her hair, so oh. she's nervous to come on. <laughs> Tell me your bad hair Love day. you, girl. Hi, today all day. We've got a great show for you on this Thursday morning, including an all-day exclusive chat you can only see here. But let's kick it off with Pop Start. The 1991 classic sports comedy, A League of Their Own, is coming back as a TV series. And Dylan has the big casting announcement for the coach of the Rockford Peaches. Take a look. SG, it's time for <laughs> Dylan to do pop start. She's filling in for okay. Carson. Let's go. All right. Go get, get him, Dilly Dilly. Big news. Thanks, Savannah. And pop start this morning. First up, Nick Offerman, the actor and host of NBC's Making It, just landed his next big role. And we suspect this, uh, his time as a hot tempered Ron Swanson on Parks and Rec might just come in handy for this one. Here's a hint. You let the tying run get on second, and we lost the lead because of you! Now you start using your head! Are you crying? <laughs> There's no crying! There's no crying in baseball! Why don't you leave her alone? I mean, one Jimmy. of the best oh, movies yes. of the time, right? Offerman has been cast in the upcoming series adaptation of A League of Their Own. It's Amazon's reboot of the 1991 classic sports comedy. It sees Nick Offerman as coach Dove Porter of the Rockland Peaches, filling a role similar to Tom Hanks' character Jimmy Duggan in the original film. The show is set to follow a whole new cast of characters as they take the field, including Broad City's Abby Jacobson, The Good Place's Darcy Carter, and actress Shante Adams. So, uh, building a great team for this one, and oh my gosh, yeah. any reboot Can't of that wait. is going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, the Great Barbecue Battle of 2021. The results are in for round two of our Today Show for the July Barbecue Bracket. Yesterday, uh, I'm glad Al's not here because we fight about this all the time, cookout versus barbecue, uh, and we narrowed it down to uh, the Elite Eight now. So let's zoom into the Northwest. Uh, look at the board, which, uh -huh. sees, uh, which dish dominated round two. Yet again, burgers, I mean, you can't go up against grilled veggies. No. I don't it, know how they stood a chance. Burgers beat them out by with 92% of the vote. Uh -huh. um, and also proving you don't have to be a main dish what? to be the star. Corn on the cob took down sausage by a margin wow. of 24 points. I actually went with corn on the cob because did you? I think Jersey I did too. corn. Oh, I mean, yeah, that dominates everything. Shocked me. Um, I like it with my burger. Yeah. Yes, I totally agree. Um, Savannah, I'm sorry. So sad, SG. <laughs> <sighs> Bones with sauce. Um, <laughs> knocking, knocking out steak. Uh, it's just steak is out of the competition. I'm shocked. Um, but ribs do soldier on into the final four. Give me a roll of bounty paper towels and a rack of ribs. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. And uh, probably the biggest upset, although I disagree with this one too. I love potato salad. It beat out pulled pork. And uh, so some, uh, potato salad is advancing to our semifinals. So make sure you head over to today.com slash food to catch So wait, your it's ribs versus burgers and corn versus potato, potato salad? No, corn versus burgers now, right? And oh, potato salad okay. versus Corn versus well, it's, burgers. It's going to be potato ribs. salad versus ribs. <laughs> it's going to be ribs and burgers. It's going to be big. For sure. And then yes. the only question is, can ribs beat out burger? I and know, honestly, I if ribs beat burger <laughs> on 4th of July... I don't know anything <laughs> anymore. I think ribs are going to be I'm going to question burgers. everything. I'm with uh, you, Savannah. I'm going burgers. All right. 8.06 now. What do you say we get our mo morning boost started? Virginia Tech alum Natasha Welch recently got accepted to the university's veteran veterinarian school and to surprise her family with the news, she had them pose for what she told them was a TikTok challenge. Okay? Here's how it went. All right, so when I say the phrase, you know, I have to repeat it as I say it, okay? Okay. All right. One, two, three. Nay's going to vet school. Nay's going to vet school. What? <laughs> <laughs> Come 
on. Natasha's the class of 2025. Her family could not believe she kept that secret that long. <laughs> go Hokies, go Hokey, Hokey, Hokey. Yes. Hi, Natasha. Um, my alma mater, too. Congratulations. That's pretty cool. Oh, pretty cool. I love it. I love it. Good for her. Up next on Today Talks, the one and only J.K. Simmons is with us. Stay with us. Our across America journey here in Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Welcome back. Today in the third hour, Chanel and Dylan chat with J.K. Simmons about his new futuristic film and what's it like to shoot on a glacier. Take a look. I think we could say J.K. Simmons is something of a chameleon. We love to hate him as J. Jonah Jameson in the Spider-Man movies. And who could forget his Oscar-winning turn as Fletcher, the teacher of our nightmares in Whiplash, one of my favorite movies. Uh, and now he's busting out the big guns, literally, in the new sci-fi thriller. It's called The Tomorrow War. He plays James Forrester, who estranged son, played by Chris Pratt, has been drafted to fight a war in the future. And let me keep going here. And since James <laughs> managed to avoid the draft, Dan goes to him for help taking off his tracking device. Look at this. C-Series. Second generation. That's sensor calibrated to your pulse. Fortunately, you came for the only guy for whom this is a piece of cake. I wish you wouldn't drink while you do this. I wish Stevie Nicks would show up in her birthday suit with a jar of pickles and a bottle of baby oil. <laughs> so good. What? JK joins us now. Good morning to you. Morning, how are you? We're doing great. First off, we have to say everybody's talking about how fit you are. I mean, you are in shape. And we remember when uh, that first photo we showed, it circulated a while ago on the internet. Do you just stay in shape? There we go. Look at the guys, seriously. It's almost <laughs> not even real. Do you stay in shape for this, or is this just for the movie? Uh, I, I would like to say that I stay in shape uh, <laughs> constantly every day, but since since my last role was Fred Mertz, uh, I actually <laughs> haven't stayed in quite that good a shape the last year or so. Well, you're looking good. Yeah, that, that calls for kind of a, a different look. But <laughs> speaking of a different look, I mean, it was it was awesome to see you rock this beard. I mean, is that something you, you, you like to grow in your spare time? <laughs> I'm a big fan of the beard. I, I like my face the less <laughs> I see of it, frankly, and uh, my wife disagrees. So right now she's happy. And when I look at the movie Tomorrow War, I, that, that makes me yeah, reminisce. Happy. Exactly. So, well, it's actually a good thing that you had it because you filmed a good chunk of this movie, we understand, on a glacier, an island. How was that? Was it daunting? It was uh, it was cool uh, in in every sense of the word. Um, it was great. Yes, I, it was daunting. Really, the trip up the glacier was the most daunting in these super jeeps driven by these local guys that were sort of the the Sherpas of Iceland. Mm. And uh, once we got up there, it was just stunning. That's incredible. So, I mean, obviously, in this movie, you share a lot of screen time with Chris. Uh, Chris Pratt and Sam Richardson. So, I mean, it, it's a funny group of guys. What what was it like on set? What was filming like for for all three of you? Uh, yeah, it was kind of like, uh, you know, boys camp, uh, the <laughs> junior high school locker room, that kind of a vibe, yeah. 
I love it. Wait, switching gears just a moment. So many people are excited because you're going to be playing uh, William Frawley, a.k.a. Fred Mertz, in the upcoming Lucy and Des Arnaz uh, biopic. What can you tell us? Uh, well, it's Aaron Sorkin, so of course it's uh, an absolute genius script, and uh, and he's now Aaron Sorkin genius director as well. Mm -hmm. This was his third film as a director, and uh, yeah, we wrapped that, uh, I don't know, six weeks ago or so, and I can't wait to see it. Are you still dealing with, like, COVID restrictions when you're filming now? I mean, we've talked to so many people who filmed things, like, at the height of the pandemic, but have things eased a little bit? Is it getting more into, you know, what you're used to? Uh, no, there are still uh, significant protocols in place keeping us safe. And of course, now uh, many of us, if not most of us, are vaccinated. Everybody get vaccinated, please. Mm, yes. And, um, uh, so, but the, but the restrictions are, are still there, and, and I'm glad. I'm glad they're keeping us safe. Mm -hmm. You've checked off so many roles off your bucket list. Is there any role you, you would still like to do, any style that you would still like to, to add in? Yeah, most of the roles that I that I sort of wished I had been able to do, uh, I'm I'm a little too old for now. So you know, Scott <laughs> King or uh, um, McMurphy in Cuckoo's Nest, nobody wants to see. It. How about an but, animated uh, musical? You have a great voice. Can you sing? An animated musical, <laughs> or maybe back to Broadway. You know, yeah. now the Broadway will be reopening in the fall. Absolutely. Maybe uh, maybe it's time to go back. Absolutely. Oh, we'd love to see that. Well, endless possibilities. J.K. Simmons, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for talking with us this morning. All the best. Thanks. And we should tell everybody that Tomorrow War starts streaming tomorrow on Amazon Prime. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, it's Purse Day Thursday. Stick around to see what we're going to pull out of our pocketbooks today. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. A huge lift is underway for one of the most celebrated cities in this country, Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. This is the greatest location in the nation. <laughs> We're having a baby. Wow. The big reveal is under the lid. <laughs> hey now. Things are looking brighter, so we want to help you find the fun in 21. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Welcome back today on Hoda and Jenna. In honor of what would have been Princess Diana's 60th birthday, Diana's sons, William and Harry, are unveiling a very special tribute in memory of the Princess of Wales. Take a look. There is actually some big news today. The statue of the late Princess Diana is being unveiled. It was actually supposed to be unveiled, I think, about an hour ago. Uh, on today, and today, actually, July the 1st, would have been her 60th birthday. Can you believe she would have been 60? I can't. Like, I, it's so funny. She really is kind of frozen in the moment that we knew her. Yeah. And this moment, uh, this statue unveiling, was a long time coming. Mm -hmm. Like, her kids have been planning this for a long, long time. It was supposed to happen 
uh, there were different moments it was supposed to happen, but because and of Harry pandemic. and Meghan's wedding and yeah. the pandemic, it kind of kept getting pushed. But today is the day, and it's perfectly fitting. It's her birthday. Yes. And the two brothers are going to be together, which I think is, is going to be Meaningful beautiful. and so important, yeah. right? So the statue is going to be in the sunken garden at Lond in London's Kensington Palace. And w and as you said, both of her boys are going to I think that's going to be, be a real tribute. And There's where it'll be. By the be. way, and Prince Charles won't be there. Kate won't be there. It's mainly for Perfectly. the Spencers, yeah. yeah. And uh, someone pointed out, one of the experts was talking about how forget-me-nots were her favorite flower, yeah. and the garden is full of them, and that she had some at her wedding, and that her brother gave them to her when she was a little girl. And Harry's carried on that tradition. He, ha he gave some to Meghan for her bouquet, and I it's think, too, you know, you, we uh, imagine those boys at her funeral, mm -hmm. you know, walking behind the yeah. casket, or the pictures of her, them, yeah. with the, you know, her as a, as a playful, fun mom. So for them to be there, we've talked about this before, about grief. It doesn't go away. You know, there's going to be, it's going to be a meaningful day for the two of them. And you wonder about healing like a rift because, you know, there obviously has been one. And you wonder if in moments like this, when it's just the two of them and the memory of their mom, you know, you wonder in that moment if something happens where yeah. you just realize that, you know, you have a lot more in common. In common, yeah. yeah. And that also, you know, she would be hoping for their love to withstand. Right. So yeah. we, we're going to be following around along. I, this I can't morning. believe we might have breaking news on our story. I mean, don't hold show. us to it. No, I mean, I mean on we our broke show. some news. We when? broke in some news about what? the well, the Spanx debate with Sarah Blakely. That, that was, was not the, news. Oh, wait, is this happening now? This is live right now. Um, yeah, hang on. Let me get my earpiece in. In, Kin in Kensington live. Palace. Okay, this is live. And yeah, that's Princess that is Diana's, Princess Diana's brother. Princess Diana's brother, right yeah. there. And we see, of course, Prince mm -hmm. William. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're having some kind of a conversation. Boy, looking at Diana's brother too. Mm -hmm. And this. It's been so long since we've seen them. It's a beautiful garden, and that place was so meaningful to Diana. They said that she used to go on jogs, on runs, and would come back and sit in that garden on that bench. And it was a place her mom loved. She felt very peaceful there. And it's fitting that that will be the place where her statue will stand and where, um, you know, people can come, come and, and, visit rem her. and remember. Yeah. And we see, too, now these brothers together. Mm -hmm. If we can see a shot of both of them, they're here together yeah. to be. Usually there's like one full camera shooting everything. Mm -hmm. So you just see, you get what you so, can't really tell where they are. And this garden, by the way, went through a thousand hours of planting. There's more than mm -hmm. 4,000 flowers, including, as you said, her favorite, the forget-me-nots. Yeah. Um, you don't, we don't see Harry in this frame. He's, he's probably around there. But it's interesting. He's probably down the down the line a little bit because there are a lot of people greeting them, mm -hmm. and we're gonna keep checking in with that because I'm sure there's a lot of pleasantries and some ceremonial things before they actually do the mm -hmm. unveiling of the statue. Um, you can't really tell the proximity, but there will be a moment, obviously, where the two are yeah. um, are going to be together. So we'll check in. Yeah, we'll we'll dip in there. Don't you think what a it's moment. Also kind of beautiful and mm -hmm. poignant that our favorite flowers were forget-me-nots. Yeah, yeah. There's something really special about that, so we can't I, wait to see. And I am so looking forward to seeing the statue, too. I, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a tall order, but the guy who actually created this statue is somebody who is very well known in Britain because he created the image of Queen Elizabeth on the coins. Wow. So he knows what he's doing. And this is a weird trivia bit that somebody mentioned yes. to us on the earlier show, but his specialty is male nude sculptures. <laughs> That's what he does. Like that's his thing. I did not think that's where you were I going. By the way, I, no I didn't see that, that coming either. No. But that's wow. that's his thing. Well, so. I'm glad. You know, glad he can do it all. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of princesses, mm -hmm. our girls are going to be so excited because the new teaser dropped for the reimagined Cinderella movie. It's starring pop star Camila Cabello. Let's take a look. <laughs> Camila Cabello. <laughs> Dresses by Ella. Life outside this basement starts right now. If it's a man, I'm gonna be that one and you're gonna know my name. You're gonna know my name. Do 
you want to go to that ball? Yes, I was just crying and singing about it like two minutes ago. <laughs> she's, she's a good actress, Camilla. So good. Camille, Is this right? her first? But she was in. She, she did things before. She right? did, but you, we know her from singing. I mean, that's of like course. her thing. But how great! And she's great with Billy Porter. Billy Porter plays the fairy godmother. I love that. Adina Menzel is in it. Mini Driver is in, is it. in it. It's a huge Pierce Brosnan cast. is in it. It's going to be so. When do so we get to see this? Good. They're going to make us wait like okay, they usually do. Okay, guess Oh, well, September 3rd. That's not that far. Amazon Prime. That's a great place Isn't to see it. Isn't it kind of crazy that it's not on Disney Plus? That's a good, that's a I mean, good listen, observation. I'm not, a, I'm not a, any sort of TV expert, but... But you would think that that's Cinderella where that was. Cinderella was dizzy, am I right? I think so. Yeah, I believe so. All right, let's check our purses because it's time for Purse Day Thursday. Oh, I'm waiting for this We day. have a fun surprise. We sure do. And they said it wasn't edible or drinkable. Which so. made us sad. Bummer. like to eat. Oh. Oh, wait, it is Oh, it drinkable. is. You guys... Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. no. It's called Hard Pickle Seltzer. It's that called sounds, Afternoon Dill Light. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds not yummy. You know I what? mean, I like a pickle. I like a dill pickle. Me too. I, I don't like, like a, a sweet and sweet. Oh, I don't like a sweet. Only a dill. Why no. do we have to do this every week? Nobody I loves love it. I love a sweet. People do wait, like. Wait, wait. You like the sweet pickles? Do you like dill pickles? Yes, but I prefer the sweet. Oh, see, that's I another debate. <laughs> I prefer dill, crunchy and delicious. What a do little. You mean? The tart. sweet ones are also t are also crunchy. But they're not. They're not. They don't have that bite. You know when you make tuna and you chop them up? Yeah. Listen, that's true. I like them in tuna. Can I ask y'all a question? Is this alcoholic? Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah. It is. Oh okay. well, then we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just seltzer. Wow. Oh. Whoa. Oh, have y'all ever been in the ocean and you swallowed a bunch of water? <laughs> right? Right. It's really salty, but I kind of like it. That's exactly what it is. Mmm. See, it I'm takes not... me back. Oh. Mm. Wow, it's a limited edition. Yeah, it's, it is. It's from Brewmate Crook and Marker, and they're available now at <sighs> Crook. Brew.com, B-R-I-U. There are only 10,000 uh, 12 packs available, so you get them. get them. But you know what? Wow. I kind of like it. If you love mm. pickle juice, mm. people like pickle juice. That's what it tastes well, like. Well, when you're dehydrated, you're supposed to have pickles. Did you know that? What? I'm probably not Wait, alcohol. You are? Yeah, because it's real salty. It gives you the sodium that you need when your body... Ask Madeline Fernstrom. She'll tell you. <laughs> when you're dehydrated, you have salt? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that, am, I, am I wrong? Oh, yeah, because you eat salt tablets. That's true. Thank I remember you from, so much I, for giving me the thumbs up. I remember up. Phil from basketball camp swallowing salt pills. Okay, That's all he needed to do was have a pickle or a little pickle sel seltzer. Okay, guys, moments ago, this happened. Two brothers unveiling a statue of their mother, Princess Diana, William and Harry, on what would have been her 60th birthday. And look at that beautiful statue. You're, I think you're right, Jen. It does remind you of her teaching days. She was a kindergarten teacher, and then obviously she went on. She she loved children. She went on to work with a lot of organizations that helped the benefit of kids. And so. she does have the look of I remember just pre everything, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. She's got that kind of that beautiful look. Uh, all eyes, of course, on uh, Harry and William too to see how they are interacting on this real special day on her 60th birthday. Um, it's hard to tell, really. We're not body language experts, but we do see that they are each speaking to some of the other dignitaries there. Looking um, at the plaque, it seems, of what it says below the statue, but also how Diana poignant Princess that the two of them, her boys, mm -hmm. when she's surrounded with little children, her boys, who have now grown on to start their own families, mm -hmm. could be there. I know you can't you can't help but think of what she would be thinking and you sort of wish that the two brothers would have just a moment together because yeah. there are a lot of I know there are a lot of people there who are explaining things but you know, hopefully I, they will in the course of this day get a couple of minutes just the two of them and you know that this is public of course yeah. but that each of them have their own traditions that keeps their mom alive I read that Prince William and Kate talk about Grandma Diana mm -hmm. in their home and in fact yeah. they write letters mm -hmm. their kids Prince Charlotte and well um, yeah. The others write letters to their, to her, which is beautiful. Well, we'll be hearing a lot more about this statue uh, in the coming days, and we do wish the two brothers uh, all the best on this day. I bet you they're having a flood of memories mm -hmm. coming back. Um, there we go. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll we'll uh, we'll hear more yeah. about that. I'm sure tomorrow. Today talks continues after the break. We have an exclusive chat you can only see here.
on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, we're celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Today Talks and our exclusive content you can only see here on Today all day. You know what? I mean, I thought it was unusual on our program today that we actually had breaking news, which only has happened a handful of times in all the years I've been on this program. <laughs> but it was interesting because we were waiting to see um, Harry and William unveil the statue of Princess Diana, mm -hmm. her sons. Mm -hmm. And it was delayed. It was supposed to happen, at, you know, in the hour before our show. And then there it was. And it was kind of interesting, I think, to watch those two sons reveal that statue of their mom. And I don't know what I was expecting. Like, was I expecting a big emotional uh, moment, uh, a hug maybe, or something? Yeah. But everybody, you know, who knows what was happening in that moment? Which, yeah. Which I mean, I, I agree with you. And I think there are things that are done publicly. Yeah. And I think because so much is public now, meaning on Instagram or whatever, social TikTok, yeah. that you think that that is all that happens. Yeah. Like, we don't really know. Maybe they went back yeah, and had a wonderful They could have had a great hang. Release. And they were reporting that when Harry had to be in England five days for quarantine or whatever before he could go to this event, and they said that when William was at one of the local, um, the big, huge soccer match, he was texting with his brother. Yeah. That was some of the reporting. So y we don't know. Yeah, that's the thing. I think that know. sort of, I mean, it was emotional and beautiful, yeah. I think, for all of us who loved Princess Diana to mm. see that unveiling. But I think that's like, even when I heard that they were reported, that they were texting, when I hear stuff like that, I'm like, how do people know that? You you know what I mean? Only because it's like, how could they possibly there's, know? There's the public persona and them as princes. And, and I also think when there are cameras on you and there's an emotional moment, it's kind of strange if you're aware, which you would be, of what's going on. Imagine if you were at a moment and there were all these cameras on you and you knew reporters were studying your every move. It would it would determine how you behaved in yeah. that moment. You wouldn't be your normal self. Yeah. You would be some, somebody else. But also, more than that, there's the people, the princes, and then who they are when the cameras are off. Yeah. So none of us really know. We, we don't. We have no idea. By the way, if you were wondering what happens during the show that isn't on the air, um, I don't know how many minutes are on the air, but there's a lot of stuff in between. But we're realizing all those minutes are filled up quickly. There's no, there's all kinds of stuff to do in the commercial breaks. Uh, we're, now we're TikToking. We walked down the stairs. Uh, uh, Jenna was eating peanut butter, and I was having chips. Yeah, and, and I that was part of the TikTok. I actually TikTok tried trend. to feed because I, I, you know, TikTok. We're new at it. I don't know what's funny, what's too much. I tried to, to feed, feed me. Hoda you did. some peanut butter, but she, as you can see, she's wearing all white, and some of the oil dripped. And, and you said, inch. I think it fell on your shirt and I said no it's your shirt <laughs> Which is, oh is that my shirt I think it is yeah where did that come from I don't know it's not mine but it was it I, is I think mine, it but might it looks be yours. so good on you I yeah. think you can have it I can sure but I do think it's interesting how because we have all the we have today all day which is fun it's just a kind of a moment to unpack but all these things that happen in between and by the way guys this is a step that's downstairs we actually go oh, upstairs, upstairs is where we open the show because that's where we have to start because then because there's come down stuff. here and we it's don't. kind of fun to move yeah. and anyway Hoda eats potato chips we yeah. do some TikToking. there's some FaceTiming sometimes yeah there's we a like lot. to go through our to-do list yeah I, I've been thinking about how you make a list of what to do so you didn't you don't candy crush or don't do whatever you do yeah. by the way last night after we had our conversation you crushed 
You it crushed did. it again. But you know what happened? It wasn't for long. I was aware of my flaws, and I stopped after two games. I can't believe you keep crushing. I just made up a nobody, candy crush. Nobody, but by the way, nobody's people, on Candy Crush anymore. Well, that's what I was going to say. Candy you Crush is like it? MySpace. No, you know who's on it? Who? Me and Sydney upstairs. Sydney's on it. So you're you're like, hey, are you beating her? And Joanne just said her mother. You know what? This is rude. First of all, Joanne said I look like a Do people still do, uh, what's the one, words with friends or whatever it was no, called? I, I never did that. Well, that's fine. You, it's like playing Scrabble. Do you, ever, do you ever do the one with that you do try to do the words? What's it called? It's not words Scrabble. with friends. Scrabble. No, not that one. The one on your app, the phone one that everybody does when you're it's on the train. It's called words with friends. No, it's not with friends. Y'all, somebody no. tell me it's called words with friends. Not, that's not it. I thought it was words with friends. Thank you, Gavin. You know what, Gavin it's called words with friends. You're always Jenna. You know what? Bye. Bye, Gavin. Are you still playing Tetris? Bye. 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 Okay, All right, that's, that's it. it for this episode of Today Talks. Keep watching for more of Today Okay, um, so Oprah, I think that if you, if I stopped 15 people on the street and asked them like, who's got it all figured out, uh, who understands life, I think, they, I think your name would be top of the list because not only uh -huh. have you kind of talked about stuff you've been through, but you've also healed people, helped people heal. So, you know, they say hurt people, hurt people, and healed people, healed people. I couldn't help but thinking as you're doing this kind of deep dive into mental health and into trauma, did you find as you were digging through all this that there were actually there was actually some grief inside you that had yet to be resolved, had yet to be healed? I didn't find that, but you're just asking the question makes me emotional because what I did find through the process of working on the Me You Can't See for Apple TV Plus and also working on the What Happened to You book with Dr. Perry, I yeah, there's there's a beautiful uh book, a poem called Yet Do I Marvel by County Cullen. Mm. And yet do I marvel at my life. I don't know how <laughs> I did it. I mean, one of the conversations I had with Dr. Bruce Perry when uh, we first decided to do this book, I asked him, tell me, then why aren't I crazy? And he pointed out that you had relationships in your life other than your family members that made you feel valued, that allowed you to be seen and whole. And that is why to this day, I have deep appreciation and adoration, not just for my teachers, but all teachers who are doing that. Because I know that lots of kids go home to a life that isn't so good, but they can come and sit in a classroom mm. and be seen and be valued. Mm -hmm. And one of the great lessons for me, Hoda, as I know you're experiencing in your daily work, is that in, in listening to other people's stories, is that everybody <laughs> wants to be seen and they want to be heard and they want to know that their story matters. And so all of our relationships are about that. So one of the reasons I do consider myself uh, wise at this point in my life is because I've not only paid attention to my life, been observant of what's happened to me, but I've been a student of other people's lives and paid attention to what has happened to them. And we are just all on this spectrum. And that's one of the things I wanted to share in the What Happened to You mm -hmm. book. And one of the things I wanted to share in the series, uh, The Me You Can't See, is that we're all on the spectrum. And in the United States, Hoda, in the United mm -hmm. States, one out of five people admit that they are going through some mental health struggle. Mm -hmm. So we're all on the spectrum. Some days you're 10 plus, yeah. you know? Most days I'm like traveling in the 11, 12 range and, and on a scale of one to 10. Mm -hmm. And some days you're four or minus four, depending on what's going on in your life or what has happened to you or how you were able mm -hmm. to process it. So that's what I wanted people to understand for both the book and the series. Well, the book and the series are both so enlightening. And I was listening to one of your, your master class the other day, which... I, I adored, but you said something in there that struck me. You said, I never had therapy, 
my show was my therapy. And I wondered mm -hmm. since that point, have you had therapy? Do you feel like you ever wanted or needed it? No. You know who is my therapist? Gail King. Mm -hmm. Because I, we talk in the book, uh, What Happened to You, about how we process our feelings. And when something terrible has happened to somebody, and I remember this with Elizabeth Smart, I talk about it in the book, when I went to interview her parents and they were saying she hadn't told us what happened yet. I was like, why not? Why mm -hmm. haven't you heard? Why haven't you asked her? It's because when terrible things happen, even in our own lives that are not tragic things, but just like a, something with a boss or a, 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 a bad experience, it's you do it in doses with your with your girlfriends, with your husband, mm -hmm. with your partners and your relationships. You tell a little bit, then you laugh about something else. Then you go back and you tell a little bit more about it. Then you talk about it a little more. Then you process mm -hmm. it. So I've already always been able to dose uh, with Gail. Mm -hmm. And I would say in the 25 years of the show, she watched every show and every night I would have my conversation mm. that I now know the scientific term for it is I would do my dosing <laughs> with, with with Gail about it. So I've always had um, the ability to be vulnerable, to share my truest feelings with Gail, with 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 my best friend, Bob Green, with Maria, mm -hmm. with, you know, people, uh, Stedman, who who actually were always willing to tell me the truth. Right. So, no, I've never had I've never had a clinical therapist. I've never gone to a therapist. I've never laid on anybody's couch. I don't know if that's even real. Do you lay on the couch? <laughs> <laughs> but I have heard stories and shared stories and done exactly what we're trying to do with the me you can't see. I've seen myself and other people's stories. You know, mm -hmm. the first time I was able to admit that I had been sexually abused, raped, assaulted mm -hmm. as a nine-year-old happened on television. Hmm. And it happened on television because a woman was sharing her story. Mm. And I thought, I swear until that moment, I was the only person who'd ever had that mm. happen to me. So in the middle of her, in a show, sharing her story, I went, that happened to me. Mm. And so that's, that's how I got my therapy because I've had every major dysfunction <laughs> uh, discussed uh, on the air over the years and would see myself in other people's stories. And just as we've been able to do, I think, with the, the series, The Me You Can't See, and use celebrities on purpose, mm -hmm. Harry's story, my story, Glenn Close's story, Gaga's story, Damar's story, all there to show you that it doesn't matter where you come from, what your mm -hmm. background is, how much money you have, that we're all in the spectrum with everybody else. Mm -hmm. That's why there are stories from people's names you know and people's names you don't know, but that are equally relatable. the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Orlando, Kentucky. Cleveland, reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Oprah, what did you learn about your childhood brain? What what did you learn recently through this book about how your childhood brain was processing all of that 
terrible stuff that you had to go through as a child? Mm, such a good question. Um, this book, the What Happened to You book in particular made me think really differently about my own life. So I think that certainly all of the feelings of um, not fitting in or, or my disease to please or okay. feeling like if I don't do what everybody wants me to do, I'm going to be rejected somehow up until my 40s, literally, when I was running the Oprah show and in the power seat, I would have such angst mm -hmm. about having to let somebody go who deserved to be let go or having to be in a meeting with somebody who I was, I was going to have to disagree with them. Mm -hmm. And what I realized uh, after doing this book with Dr. Perry is that, oh, what I, what I was afraid of in every instance, I'm afraid I'm going to get a whipping. I'm afraid mm. I'm going to get that whipping, even though I'm the boss lady, mm. even though I'm the one in charge, even though I'm the one who's running the business. I still have that part of myself that until, you know, my late 40s, almost into my 50s, I was still trying to process and figure that part of myself out. I mean, I knew that the reason I felt that way was because of what had happened to me. Mm -hmm. I just hadn't processed it. So I would say that the What Happened to You book really mm -hmm. helped me think about my life. And also to understand that there must have been a lot of, I mostly remember the bad stuff, mm -hmm. but there had to be a lot of good stuff for me to have turned out the way that I did, you know? And I think so much of my sense of validation came from outside, like in the church. I was mm -hmm. speaking by the time I was three or four. And so I felt seen there. Mm -hmm. I felt seen by my, you know, t teachers. And, uh, you know, my grandmother, who was very harsh, but a lot like a lot of Black parents during that era, mm -hmm. um, the, the idea of hugging and loving on your child or even allowing the child to feel seen was just not a part of her part of her life. But she did give me Jesus. She did give me a belief in something bigger than myself. So I'm grateful for, for that. I love how you said up till you were about 10, you thought Jesus was your daddy. I thought that, I was, did. that was the best. You know what struck me? There were so many parts of this that struck me. Um, when you went to go see your mom in Milwaukee for the very first time at age six, mm -hmm. and you were told that you could not come in the house to sleep because you were too dark, your skin was too dark, you slept outside. Yeah. It struck me that you talked about a guardian angel, like you dreamt of an angel watching you. Did you, yeah. did you believe- I named being, her Melinda. Melinda? Yeah, I named her Melinda, yeah. Do, yeah. You, do you believe it was a real, I mean, to this day, do you think that there was really a guardian angel watching over you? I absolutely do. I believe that my belief that there was is what saved my mind. I believe that if I had not believed that I had something bigger and greater than myself to protect me, then I would have lost my mind. I would have become bitter. I would have been really very angry with my mother and I would have carried that bitterness in a way that would have affected my behavior in school. I would have been acting out. I would have, I would have been a different kind of person had I not had a belief in something that was bigger than myself. Mm -hmm. So do I believe the angel was there? I imagined that she was there. I literally would like see her on patrol, oh. you know, in my own little six year old mind, I would see her on patrol like she's there and she's taking care of me and I'm gonna be okay so that I could sleep at night. And I, I think now knowing what I know about what happened to you, had I just slept there every night in the fear mm that I felt the very first night I arrived there, I wouldn't have survived it. Hmm. I wouldn't have survived it. And I would have awakened every day just angry. And But 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 I didn't. I awakened hmm. with, okay, and then we'd get on my knees and pray at night. She's going to come back again and she's going to protect me. So, yeah, I think the belief that she was real saved my mind. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, that's your shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. 
We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you what you must know. The biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. How did you square the fact that you loved God so deeply and dearly, yet somehow these things kept, bad things were just happening to you? How did you square oh. those two? Oh, 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 I love this question, Hoda. There is a wonderful um, hymn that says, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now, for my journey now, for my journey now. Maya Angelou actually wrote a book called Wouldn't Take Nothing for my journey now. And I wouldn't take anything mm. for having been raised the way that I was mm. and having the experiences that I did because every one of them created what um, Bruce Perry calls in, in what happened to you, post-traumatic wisdom. Mm -hmm. It is because I was sexually abused, raped at nine and 10, 11 and 12 and 13 and 14, that I have such empathy for people who've experienced that. It is because I was raised poor and no running water and going to the well and getting whippings that I have such compassion for people who have experienced it. And so it has given me a broader understanding and a deeper appreciation for every little mm. and big thing that I, I now have. And now this is what I now, I just had this thought. Mm. So thank you so much for bringing it up. I had this thought after uh, writing What Happened to You. I suddenly realized that being sent to live with my mother, which at the time felt like my grandmother is now abandoning me and sending me away. Oh my God, Hoda, I realized that was my saving grace. Mm because otherwise I would have started school in Mississippi, mm. segregated Mississippi, mm. sitting in a classroom where I was, would be made to feel that I was less than the other uh. children. Instead, I got shipped to Milwaukee and put in that kindergarten class where I already knew how to read because my grandmother gave me Jesus. I all knew all the Bible stories and knew all the... So when I walked into kindergarten, I write my kindergarten teacher a letter and say, Miss New, I do not belong here because I know a lot of big <laughs> words. And I, and I write them out. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Joshua. And I got sent to the principal's <gasps> office. So it wasn't until... And they moved to the mm. first grade the mm -hmm. next day. So I got myself out of kindergarten. But it wasn't until... Doing the big revelation for me is, oh, mm. even my grandmother mm. becoming ill and not being able to take care of me in this particular moment mm. is the thing that changed the trajectory of my life in that moment. I, that, I, I just thought, wow, I had never thought of that before. Like, whoa, what happened to me? Oh, I got sent away. I was no longer with my grandmother. And uh, oh, that is the thing that saved me. Because I would be a very different person had I been raised in a, in a, in a Mississippi uh, school. Oh, my God. I want to weep right now. I have, I'm having this big wave that's, that's hit me. It's <laughs> crashing on me. Oh, that's beautiful. No, but that, 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 that's, that's what, that's yeah. what post-traumatic wisdom is. Yeah. It's like, oh, that thing happened. I thought it yeah. was a terrible thing. Yeah. 
I'm sleeping out on the porch. I'm uh, I felt separated, not a part of that created a sense of, oh, I got to take care of myself. Wow. It's it's me and the, my, my angel team wow. here, you know. So all of it, all of it works out if you're open to see it. Right. If you're open to see what happened to you and let what happened to you allow you to recognize mm -hmm. the me you can't see because they're all connected. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Let's talk for a second about uh, Prince Harry. He spoke out, and you know, for people to get rid of that stigma of mental health, people have to speak out, and Prince Harry has been speaking out. And with his speaking out, Oprah, he's got gotten some criticism. I don't know whether it's for speaking out too much. He asked for privacy, and now people feel like they're seeing him everywhere. What are the critics not understanding about what's going on? Uh, I think privacy, uh, you know, I ask for privacy, and I'm talking all the time. So I think being able to have a life that you are not intruded upon by photographers or people flying overhead or invading your life um, is what every person wants and deserves is to not to be intruded and invaded upon. And I think when they say they wanted privacy, that is what they were asking for. But the uh, one of the reasons um, from the very beginning when I had one of my early, early conversations with Harry, about what do you think are the two most important issues facing the world now? And he said, climate change and mental health. And I said to him, oh, well, I'm doing the series on Apple for Apple TV Plus mm -hmm. and, and started talking about it. And then he said, well, when I turned to leave, Oda, he said, well, if you ever need any help with that, let me know. And I went, hmm. you, did you say, <laughs> did I need some help? And so his interest uh, and partnership was really authentic and, about his desire to champion these conversations. Mm -hmm. And so I think that you're, you're asking for privacy in your own personal life does not mean that you don't want to also use your platform to help the world see itself differently. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is also one of the reasons, Hoda, that Harry and I wanted to include Harry and I and the whole radical team, all of us working on this, wanted to, to, to include uh, people who were known mm -hmm. and people who were not known. Because, you know, what I think celebrity is good for, what you're being known is good for, is for people to be able to see themselves in you. Mm. I mean, that's what it is. It is being able to say, oh, if that is possible. And the same thing is true uh, whether you are being celebrated for something mm -hmm. that's accomplished or being acknowledged for being open and vulnerable uh, about something that is meaningful to you. Ah, mm -hmm. that happened to mm -hmm, me too. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that's what people will come away from. Sure. And I'm hoping that people, you know, understand that for them, privacy means not being invaded, not being, not being intruded, but they are public figures who are going yeah. to use their platform to speak to the world. 
And, and I'm sure you, we will continue to hear from them. Yeah. They didn't mean we're going to go. Privacy doesn't mean silence. Mm -hmm. That's what people are missing. Privacy doesn't mean silence. When they did their interview with you, Oprah, and you've, I'm sure, spoken to them since, obviously, did they, reflecting on it, did they have any regrets about sitting down and talking about their lives? Um, they have not shared any regrets with me. We had a conversation prior to the interview where I do this with every single person I ever speak to uh, about something important. Um, and I started doing it on my show mm -hmm. like around 1989, I think, um, going into the green room and saying to the person, tell me what you want. Mm -hmm. What do you want to happen here? What mm -hmm. do you want to come out of this interview? And uh, we didn't meet before, but we texted and both of them shared that they wanted the truth mm. and they wanted truth and they wanted healing and they wanted this to be, um, in, you know, an open conversation and that there was nothing off limits. And I, this is my number one goal mm. was I understood what had happened to them and I wanted the rest of the world to come away being able to answer the question, oh, now mm -hmm. I understand what happened. Mm -hmm. So the question was, why did they leave? That was the, that mm -hmm. was the number one question mm -hmm. that I wanted to have answered. And I think by the time that interview was done, people understood. Oprah, did you think that Harry was, was caught off guard by anything that Megan said during the interview? Was he surprised by anything? Mm. Let me just tell you, that couple, is one of the most in sync couples I've mm -hmm. ever seen. I mean, it is a joy to see them uh, together behind the scenes. And so I think that they probably, that they have not shared this with me, but I, I, I think that they would have not just shared their intention with me, but they would have had a conversation um, about what they both wanted to accomplish mm -hmm. in, in, in that interview, so. Well, Oprah, this was great. I love you. Uh, I wish we had more time, but I always want more time with you. And um, Wonderful talking to you. Thank Wonderful you so much. You. Thank you for everything. Today is good as hell. <laughs> we have been waiting for this day. We have renamed this day. Yeah. Oprah Day. Yes. You want to know She's been very busy on her tour. Let's check out what she's been up to. Uh, I can't take it. <laughs> I have some good news to share. I'm going on tour. Oprah Winfrey is hitting the road. She's four stops into her nine city tour across America. As part of Oprah's 2020 vision tour, your life in focus. Oprah covers diet, fitness, mental health, and more during each day-long event. Which are run by WW, the company formerly known as Weight Watchers. Oprah is part owner of WW and sits on their board. As long as there is breath, there is more. I see you back there! Throughout her tour, Oprah's been joined on stage by A-listers, including Lady Gaga, The Rock, Tina Fey, and Amy Schumer. Her next stop, Brooklyn alongside Michelle Obama. But first, she's with us, right here in Studio 6A. Everyone, say hello to Oprah! Oprah! <laughs> it's happening! Just need a moment. Just uh, to, do y'all feel like you need a moment? <laughs> I feel 
like, I need a moment. This is um, so fun, guys. Okay. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. And you manifested she did, this. She did, didn't she, yes, Oprah? She did. I tried to manifest it, but really all I wanted was this moment. Oh. Thank you. I wanted this oh. moment. Oh. Let's do it again. Oh. 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 I, wanted, oh. I manifested oh. this oh. moment. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Which means, I mean, I can't tell you, Oprah, I feel like I've been in this business a hundred years. And I was, thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, that's so cool. Isn't that cool? You probably don't need one, but oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. we do. Good. Oh, anyway, good. Uh, um, I, sorry, goodbye. Um, I can't, cool. you know, I think, you know when people say like you mean so much to me, but they've never met you and I know maybe it always does seem a little weird, but this is really one of those moments for me. So, well, thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for coming. So, 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 yeah. So, yeah. So, so yeah. tell me what, I know I've heard you say that, but tell me why. Like you watched over the years. Yes. You, Yes. I watched you over the years. I've watched you lift people up. Yeah. Every, you know, there are like, there's only a couple people on the earth who you want to emulate in our business. And I, used, I watched you like hold people's hearts in your hand. Oh. And I remember thinking like, how does she do that? And, and you did it in such a way and it was always so tender and real. And like the fact that you're sitting here on this day is really kind of blowing my mind. <laughs> I mean, I'm 55 or 56, nobody knows. <laughs> cares but it doesn't matter it, it it just shows you like the the kid in you is still in there when you walk in the door so well, thank you, thank you. Thank and you. everybody in here oh, must yes. feel the same way Oh, today all day, summer's officially here so get outside do something fun up next Sama Dada is sharing the ultimate menu for a perfect picnic party in the park this is sort of like playing with Play-Doh, but it tastes good and it's edible. Play-Doh is not edible, I don't think. Play-Doh is edible? Yeah. No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> There's no way. I just learned that Play-Doh is edible. Don't eat it though. That's disgusting. Just eat these instead. In the summer months especially, it's really nice to get outside and take advantage of your local parks. And listen, I am your dream picnic guest because I never come without the most important thing, food. So I'm gonna show you how to make two of my favorite recipes for your next hashtag picnic party, my easy homemade turmeric hummus and my favorite spiced chickpea burgers with a delicious red pepper sauce. Some may say it's sacrilegious to make hummus with canned chickpeas, but you know what? Convenience is a gorgeous thing, and you can still get a really delicious result with the canned chickpeas that have been sort of hibernating at the back of your pantry for quite some time. If you're freaked out at all by making hummus at home, just don't be, because you know what? All you need to make it is a blender. So let's start. Starting with my canned chickpeas, adding these straight to the blender. They're so cute. I'm gonna go ahead and add my tahini. You cannot have hummus without tahini. It is like peanut butter and jelly, you know what I mean? So don't forget it. You just simply can't have hummus without it. It makes it nice and earthy and creamy and flavorful. Okay. You've got those really savory flavors from that tahini, from the chickpeas, so now we need a little bit of tartness and that's where our lemon juice comes in. Just gonna roll the lemon to release some of that juice. Lemon juice going straight in my blender. It's gonna make this hummus really bright and zingy. I will warn you, once you learn how to make this hummus at home, you may never go back to store-bought. I'm sorry, but I'm just not sorry. Perfect. Lemon is done. Now I'm gonna add in my garlic. I like using raw garlic here because it has a really punchy, flavorful taste and we want all of that flavor in this hummus. Here's where we really spice it up, okay? We're gonna add my three favorite spices. I'm adding some cumin. Adding some paprika for a little hint of smoke and spice.
And what would this turmeric hummus be without turmeric? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> so I'm adding my turmeric in. Another reason I wanted to make a turmeric hummus is because of that gorgeous yellow color. So that's really gonna give that hummus that bright pop. It's gonna look really good on your table. I promise. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and some freshly ground black pepper. Now I'm just gonna blend. In order to get this hummus super smooth, we're gonna add a little bit of water, tablespoon by tablespoon, until it reaches our desired consistency. For me, that's very smooth and velvety and luxurious. Starting with just a bit. The trick with this hummus to get it super velvety smooth is when you reach your desired consistency, blend it for an extra three or four more times. That's gonna make it even more smooth. Like, look at that. I really cannot wait. Let me just adjust to taste. See if it needs anything. I mean, come on, it's perfect. I'm gonna add the hummus into my bowl. Have you ever seen anything this smooth in your life? No, right? Okay. Now, let me show you how to adorn this hummus. I'm gonna smooth it out. I created a little swoosh so that the olive oil and spices have a little home. Drizzle some olive oil on top. Sprinkling with a little bit of za'atar. If you don't know what za'atar is, it's a Middle Eastern spice blend with sumac, sesame seeds, and another host of spices. It's so good. If you don't have za'atar, don't worry. You can totally omit it, but I think it tastes amazing with it. I'm gonna add a touch of paprika just for a little color. This works as a nice contrast to that bright yellow that the turmeric gives this hummus. I mean, look at how pretty that is, right? But we're not done yet. I have this gorgeous platter of fresh vegetables here and I'm just gonna cut them and adorn them around my hummus. If you don't feel like slicing your veggies yourself, no worries, you can buy it pre-cut. I've got some time on my hands. I mean, this is art. Monet, is that you? It's me. I think I made a masterpiece. I'm not trying to be conceited, but like, are we all looking at the same thing here? Doesn't this make you wanna be one of my picnic guests? Maybe? So pretty. Need to take a picture. My phone really does eat first. I know that's cliche, but it's kind of true. I'm, oh my God, I was immediately taken aback by how pretty this looked. <laughs> ah, I cracked myself up. I'm taking like 20,000 pictures. <laughs> I think 12 would have been fine, but... <laughs> okay. I think I got the shot. Can confidently say I got the shot. <sighs> I'm gearing up. Okay. This is the most both exciting and tragic part of making hummus, is that part where you ruin the art. But it's okay. This is what it's for. Okay, I'm going in. Ah. 
Did that make you all feel things? Because I just felt really emotional. <laughs> okay, ready to taste. Mm. It's so good. Something so flavorful paired with a simple, crisp vegetable, just like, these vegetables just gotta glow up. Thanks to this hummus, it's art. It's art. No picnic would be complete without a sandwich, so I'm gonna show you how to make my favorite chickpea burger with a red pepper sauce. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you gonna get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. A huge lift is underway for one of the most celebrated cities in this country, Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. This is the greatest location in the nation. <laughs> We're having a baby. Wow. The big reveal is under the lid. It is. <laughs> hey, now. Things are looking brighter, so we want to help you find the fun in 21. <laughs> Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now, it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. To turn your favorite hummus into my red pepper special sauce, first cut two peppers in half and de-seed them. Then roast the red peppers at 450 degrees for about 25 minutes. After removing the peppers from the oven, they'll need to be steamed for 10 to 15 minutes. You can do this by inverting a glass bowl over the peppers onto a cutting board. Sealing the peppers creates steam, making it easier for the skins to peel right off. Remove the pepper peels and discard. Yep, they're a little slippery. Roughly chop the red peppers into large pieces. Add two cups of your favorite hummus to a high-speed blender. Homemade or store-bought will do just fine. Now, drop in your roasted red peppers. Blend the mixture until it's well combined and super smooth. Now, this special sauce is ready to be spread on anything your heart desires. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? 
How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nike News with Lester Holt. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Having a good veggie burger recipe in your back pocket is sort of like having your best friend on speed dial. It's pretty useful. And I don't know if people are really using speed dial anymore, but you get the point. My chickpea burgers are deliciously spiced, they're super hearty, and they're perfect for when you want something substantial that still happens to be plant-based. First things first, I want this burger to have a lot of complex layers of flavor, so I'm gonna saute some onion and garlic to put in it. Just gonna dice my red onion. I'm only using half here. I'm using a red onion here because I really like that it adds that nice sweetness. It's gonna be so good in this veggie burger. Also aesthetically speaking, I know it's what's on the inside that counts, but aesthetically speaking, these red onions are really pretty. <laughs> that purpley red, we love it. Red onions are diced. I'm now gonna mince my garlic. Great way to mince garlic, all you're gonna do is take your clove, use the flat edge of your knife, get some of your aggression out, and then start mincing. I'm gonna do this with all of the rest of my cloves. Garlic, it's our friend, okay? You may smell like garlic for three days after cooking with it, but it's worth it. It's worth the price you have to pay. You wanna extract all of that garlicky flavor, it's so good. And we're mincing it really finely so that we can get out all of that flavor, all of that aroma, all of that garlic perfume that will plague you for the next three days. <laughs> all right. Now I'm gonna heat my pan and add some olive oil. My oil is shimmering and now I'm gonna go ahead and add my onions. Got some resistant ones in here. Don't worry, you're gonna become a burger. Something to celebrate. All right. We want these onions to be tender, translucent, starting to brown around the edges. When we get a little bit of that caramelization, it's gonna impart so much flavor onto these burgers. And you might be wondering, why didn't we add the garlic with the onions? But we can't do that because the garlic takes a lot less time to cook. So if we added with the onions, it would burn. And that's not cute. My onions look perfect. They're nice and golden brown around the edges. They're tender, translucent, which means it's time for the garlic. Doesn't need too much time to become a little brown, about two minutes. Don't forget, and I'm reminding you here to season with salt and pepper. Flavor is our friend. We always want more of it. Okay, this looks amazing. The garlic is nice and golden, it's got some color. I'm gonna set this aside to cool and then get to work on the base of my burger. For the base of this burger, I'm starting with some cashews. I know that sounds crazy, but cashews are buttery and delicious. They really allow this veggie burger to be hearty and meaty without any actual meat. So I'm gonna add that into my food processor. I'm using raw cashews here, unsalted, completely raw. This is important. All I'm gonna do is process these cashews into a nice fine powder, kind of like a flour.
looks pretty good. All right, this looks perfect. Let me just show you the texture real quick. It's sort of like this nice flower, you can see. It's gonna be a really hearty base for this burger. Okay, cashews are done. Now we're gonna move on to the rest of my ingredients. Now I'm gonna add some flaxseed meal. This is gonna be really great as a binder for these burgers. It's sort of like a vegan replacement for an egg. Okay, looking cozy in there. And because I can't live my life without any spice, it just simply is not possible. I'm gonna add my spices. Starting with a little paprika. And just know, these spices aren't gonna make it spicy, right? It's gonna be flavorful, it's gonna add a lot of body and taste. That's what we like. A little bit of turmeric. Yum. Some cumin. And finally, some coriander. This is a chickpea burger, so we gotta add our chickpeas. These are just drained. <laughs> and now we're gonna process. It's okay if this mixture isn't fully pulverized. It's kind of nice to have a little bit of that chickpea texture. So don't sweat it if you've got a little chickpea hanging out in there. Now, I'm just gonna add some olive oil and then, remember my onions and garlic from earlier? These are going in there as well. A little olive oil. And then, my onions and garlic. Perfect. Okay, you probably guessed this, but... We're gonna process one more time. My mixture is looking amazing. Gonna transfer it to a bowl. Just transferred my patty mixture into my bowl and you'll notice it's kind of thick and sticky, which is great because then we'll be able to form it into patties really nicely. Because I want this to have a little bit of zest, a little bit of something herby, I'm just gonna add some cilantro in here. You can totally use parsley if cilantro freaks you out. I won't judge you. I'm just gonna roughly tear them. I like those big pieces of herbs, but if you want it smaller, you can totally chop it. Okay. Mix that in. And now we're ready to form them into patties. A couple of things I wanna do before I form these into patties. First, remove all my rings. <laughs> so I wear like 12,000. And now I'm gonna oil my hands just to make sure that nothing sticks to them. Just a little on here, just a little. I'm using extra virgin olive oil. I think you're moisturizing your hands. <laughs> but you're really just prepping to make your burgers. Okay, here we go. It's very fun, very therapeutic, and look how well this sticks together. So I'm gonna form these into like a little ball at first and then I'll flatten them out into patties. You can really make these as big or as small as you'd like. I'm going for like a major burger situation, but you can also make little small burgers as well if you want little bite-sized snacks, if you wanna throw them on a salad. They're very versatile. See how virtually nothing is sticking to my hands? You can thank the extra virgin olive oil for that. You've got a lot of really hearty elements in this burger, the cashews, the chickpeas. It allows it to stick together, but also allows you to feel really satiated. It's really delicious, and just a really great way to eat a veggie burger. That's exciting. I'm gonna put these in the oven at 375 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. Make sure you flip them once halfway through baking. And if you don't wanna eat them now, don't worry. You can freeze them for another day. They're perfect for meal prep.
For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. America journey here in Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland, reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. I mean, is this a joke? Look at this. That crisp golden exterior? It looks so beautiful. If you did want it to be a little more crisp on the outside, feel free to sear them. But to me, this looks perfect. It's time to assemble my burger. I'm very excited. I've got my bun, got my tomatoes, my lettuce, and I have a little red pepper special sauce to go in the burger as well. So I'm gonna go for it. Got my bun. I like a lot of sauce, so I'm gonna go ahead and be generous here. This is gonna add more flavor, a little bite, and some nice color too. I'm gonna spread both sides of the burger, both buns, here as well. The red pepper sauce is like tangy, a little sweet. These are roasted red peppers. Okay, now for my star. Go ahead and add one of my burgers. Straight onto my bun. It's like it was meant to be there. It's almost upsetting how perfect it looks on that burger bun. Okay, gonna add a little fresh tomato. And some lettuce for some greens in my life. Okay, time for that other bun. I mean, come on, look at that. Doesn't that look good? Look at the colors. I gotta take a picture. Doesn't that look good? <laughs> okay. Oh my God, look at that. All of those layers of flavor. That looks really good. <laughs> okay, is it time? I'm nervous, I'm not gonna eat this in a cute way at all, but I guess it really doesn't matter. Okay, here I go. I'm gonna go from this side. This seems more approachable to me. Okay, here we go. Mmm. I mean, this chickpea burger is so well spiced, so well seasoned. I think I need another bite. It seems like I must take another bite. Okay. Mmm. It's just simply not right. It's simply not right how good it is. That red pepper special sauce, though, ties everything together. See, this is why I'm everyone's favorite picnic guest. I do stuff like this, and then they always invite me again. <laughs> you can be that person too. This is, I'm speechless, I'm speechless, I'm speechless. Okay, I'm, I'm going in. You, someone has to stop me, someone has to stop me. I'm gonna keep eating this. No one's gonna stop me? Okay. <laughs> All right.
Going to Central Park is one of my favorite things to do in New York. It's the perfect place for a picnic party. I invited my sister and my best friend for a little afternoon lunch. Hey! hey. hey. <laughs> 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 come on, come on, come on. Okay, Yay. guys, look at my crudite tape plata. Yeah, I'm eyeballing it. I cannot live my life without hummus, and I love bringing it to a picnic because it's easy to pack and snack on. Mm. We love a fresh veg. Mm -hmm. And a yeah, steak hummus cream. is so good. Yes. Don't you think? Hummus is so good. <laughs> <laughs> My chickpea burger is one of my favorite plant-based meals. It's hearty and comforting, plus it's great hot or room temp. Oh, oh I like that you're taking photos. That makes me happy. Are you contemplating? Okay, cheers. 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 It looks like Shake Shack, honestly. It looks like Shake Shack. It's nice. Okay. Doesn't it? This uh -huh. looks fake. It's like a Krabby Patty. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing I love more than sharing my food with the people that I love, and a picnic is a great place to do it. Let's do it. Okay. Aww. After school playtime for Venus and her nine year old sister Serena is a lot different from other kids their age. Their afternoons are spent with their father Richard Williams, who loads them and tennis gear into the Volkswagen bus and heads for the local park. I think when I was five years old, yeah, that's when I think I started liking it a lot. I really started getting serious when I was seven. I think, um, First, it was my dad, my mom, my family going out there to help me and push me. And also, on, on their part, it helps me to go out there to do my best and to accomplish my goals. Oh. Sometimes I feel it's just like it was just destiny, you know, for her, for the two, both of them, because my first three girls, they went out and they, never, they didn't take to it, but the last two, they liked it a great deal. We were there since they were up, up. Yeah. All of us, the whole family pitched in. If they weren't picking up balls or whatever, it was a whole family project. Everyone was out there. According to Richard, he and his wife knew that tennis would eventually play a major role in the Williams family. I'm not going through that shot later. Yeah, no, no, straight through it, straight through it. Good. We uh, somewhat had the kids' future plan before they were born. And uh, every, each kid in the house had the opportunity to play tennis. And, and Venus and Serena, they, uh, they sort of liked it. And the uh, first day that I, I, t I took Venus to the tennis court, I, I, I knew I had a champion. I just knew it. With 52 junior titles and no losses, Venus's serves aren't the only things that sometimes go unanswered. The phone calls from eager agents and companies offering sponsorships average about five a week. The constant calling, and I mean, it started even before she was, I mean, eight or something, I don't know. Six years it's been so long, you know, it's like, wait, you know, I'm not want to put my child out there, she got a lot to learn, you know. But it's, I want her to get enough to learn to deal with the media and be able to handle it, but I don't want her overexposed and just uh, exploited. I've had people to walk up to me and go to talking about so much, so, uh, making me a millionaire right now. <laughs> and I don't have to drive that old, that old bus out there no more than smoke. So I think that we are doing a, a very clever thing of not accepting these packages and, and, and learning where we are first and getting a little bit more education and so on so we'll know exactly what we're doing. If we take one step at a time, never rush the girls, neither one of them, and we be good devoted parents to uh, the kids and make sure they're well balanced. And we teach our, our kids that uh, tennis is not, the, uh, it's not everything. 
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the third hour of today, and I'm Venus Williams, and actually, this is not the tennis channel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Al, Craig, and Dylan, and I'm sitting in Chanel's seat because I am help kicking off the third hour of the Job Swap series. Yeah. 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 I noticed I wasn't in the photo, though, on the, well, on the intro. That well, was that's next. Okay. That's next. All right. Well, see you. I like you this. Oh, she's <laughs> already taken over. Yes. I need to be in the photo. Chanel who? Huh? What? Chanel, I, I think we need to Chanel come on over, Do right? Miss Williams, that's Get me. the intro. Come on over. Okay. Oh, Everything we taught hey. you. Almost. Almost. Venus has swapped out jobs much better than you have. How are you? Are That's you? right. I didn't bring my mom today. I should have. You didn't bring your mom. Oh. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. So Hi, coming mom. up Hi, later mom. in the show, you're going to you're going to show us what I happened when you took I was over on, for her. So she's actually watching right now. We should have oh, oh, We should have had her call in or something. Oh, <laughs> we, it's not too late. We oh, can, there you go. We can okay. have her call in. Have her call That's in. how our love affair began. I interviewed her mom for my series, right? And then I was interviewing her, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys are like the same person. Like the things they say, their mannerisms. I'm proud of my mom and everything I taught her. I would think so. <laughs> you should know, though. This isn't the first time you've been on this. It'll throw back Thursday. Apparently not. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we, shall we roll the I, I don't footage? think we should show this Yes, footage. I think Let's we should. See. <laughs> and then I'll give this to somebody. Let's go back to 1991. Oh Take God. a look. Oh, but we don't have it. Oh, no. Are you kidding? Oh, there we yes. go. No, no, that's not it. That's not it. That's, that's right. Oh, okay. No. So close. So, Venus, so this is very serious. When I was seven. I think um, first it was my dad, my mom, my family going out there to help me and push me. Oh, Sarah oh looks good, God. right? It's, do you remember Not that bad. little girl? Yes, I, I think I still, I still have that forehead kind of large. <laughs> I got but, one of those too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see me coming. Yeah, but that was cool. I forgot uh, about that. I, I remember know. my dad was so proud of that piece. He used to show everyone that came to the house. I, for, I didn't, at the time I didn't realize it was today. I just, people came with a camera and that's right. all I knew, you know? <laughs> and uh, look at you now. Look at you now. All right. Here, here's another one. We got what? another throwback another Thursday. Throwback? Oh, well, you posted this one on Throwback Thursday, I think. Oh, I think. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Let's take a look at this picture. Oh, yeah. With the caption on this day, I won my first Olympics doubles gold medal yeah. in Sydney with one of my best friends, Serena Williams. What do you remember yeah. about that day? Well, I said one of my best friends because my other best friends are my sisters, Isha and Lynn. I Yay. love you guys. I love you girls. But I mean, that was amazing. I never dreamed that I would win an Olympic medal. Like, as you grow up and you're like, I want to win Wimbledon, but my dad loved the Olympics. Mm. So that's why I went, but I fell in love. Yeah. Wasn't it, were, were there ever moments, I, I know you guys have a whole interview together, but I'm just curious, were there ever moments growing up that maybe you just didn't feel like playing one day, but to have Serena in it with you just kind of kept pushing you? I mean, I feel like just like you go to the gym with a friend, it makes yeah. it a lot easier to kind of get through some of the hurdles. I didn't think. Thank God I was oblivious. I don't know if you saw that video, but that child was oblivious. <laughs> she was just doing what she liked to do. But I think well. every kid has tricks, so I, we would say sometimes my dad is like, Dad, we have a lot of homework today. And he's like, we got to get off the court. We got to get off the court. Yeah. But thankfully, we didn't do that every day, or so we would have never made it pro. I don't know if my mom knows that. Mom? That's yeah. hilarious. But hard to believe it happened. You've been, you've been playing pro since 1994. I know. Wow. You're trying to date years. me. Why'd you bring that up? Well, because I think it's so impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's only three years after that video, we just showed, which is wild. You're kidding. I didn't think about that. You're yeah. kidding. Wait, oh, what? Kid. The video we showed was from 1991. Right. Yeah. And then 94, yeah. oh, wow. you were pro. So, yeah. I mean, looking Dang. at that little girl three years from that point. That's wow. When wow. you do the math, it is sobering. It is bizarre. That's crazy. Yeah. All right, Impressive so you're doing, you're doing job swaps. So this yes. is what we do. You weigh in. Sometimes you mm -hmm. don't. Sometimes you just sit here. You just do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So we talk about the hot topics that are going mm -hmm. on around the country. Cards, that's right? That's, that's so one of them, so we start today. Mm -hmm. It's actually interesting. I saw the story and I thought, oh, okay, you know, a few, I think it was a few months ago, we brought you this story about these celebrity fake ads, right? right. And one yeah. of our, our news anchors, Savannah Guthrie, she was all over the internet selling some, was it like a skincare? Yeah, she was retiring from the Today Show for yeah. skincare a skincare line. line. And here's the thing, I saw it, I saw one with Savannah and I saw one with Kathy Lee and I thought, Oh, are they? Maybe they do have a skincare line. So the fact that even I thought, oh, well, maybe this is legit. And then I got to work, and Savannah's like, no, this is not happening. Well, she's certainly not the only mm -hmm. one. So now Ellen, it's happening to right. mm -hmm. all of these images, right? I think Ellen is happening to Sandra Bullock. Yeah. They're all fighting back. Dr. Oz was here. He said he's had right. the problem with he and Oprah. So I just told Dr. Oz, my mom called me a while back, and she's like, oh, there's this diet pill I saw, and Dr. Oz is supporting it, so I know it's going to be good. And I was like, wait, no I don't problem. know if it's legit. And then I asked him, and sure enough, yeah. it's not. Yeah. So anyway, they're all 
lawsuiting, right? They have this lawsuit against pretty much anyone who uses their name and their images to sell products. So before, if you see any products with any of our faces or anybody, mm -hmm. you just have to make sure it's legit because quite often... Chances are it's not. Chances are it's not. And you just go to, say, Ellen or Sandra Bullock's or Savannah's Instagram or see. Twitter, and they would clarify whether it's real or not. Yeah, you but know? people I mean, fall for it. See, people are and you see, look at the one with Sandra Bullock. It has our logo underneath it. It has O. So mm -hmm. people just assume. Right. You know, and she's got beautiful skin, so they see skincare, and they're like, oh, well, whatever she's it doing, be real. The I'm going to try. The lawsuit says that Ellen and, and Sandra Bullock were, quote, targeted because of their age, their unimpeachable reputation for honesty, and having worked hard at maintaining a health and youthful look, which con artists believe will attract and dupe unwitting customers, and mm. apparently it's working. So Anyone what? ever try that with you with your likeness? Well, let me tell you, today everything is like digital, but mm -hmm. back in the day, I would go to a random country and I'd see myself on a billboard. No oh, way. Wow. Yes, but wow. now it's it's blown up. Now it's like viral, so it's not just a billboard in this right. country. Mm -hmm. So it's more advanced. Did now. you like seeing yourself on a billboard? You're like, no, 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 no. At That's... the time, you would just kind of laugh, I guess. What could you do? <laughs> That's like, true. how do you right. contact the billboard company in some mm -hmm. country that so far? removed so but now I mean, it's a serious problem yeah sure, absolutely. has anyone tried to real quick I could see someone trying to use your name or likeness use yeah I was, using, I was mostly used as before pictures oh, <laughs> so, hair yeah. care maybe anything yeah that and was here's, that. here's another hot topic since we're talking about social media so Kim Kardashian is now talking about her thoughts on Instagram and testing there's a new feature I don't know if you've heard about this where you would remove the likes and the, view. and the view counts oh. mm -hmm. on the post mm -hmm. so I think it just depends on if you use your page for a professional you know, or for maybe for your career, it's a little different. But if you're just a 16 year old at home right. and you're posting well, the a picture. The person who runs the page still yeah. gets to see their likes, but the general public who follows them wouldn't get to see the likes. Hmm. So, I mean, I guess if, if you're doing it for your, yourself I'm to just torn. see if you post something and how many people like it, I yeah. guess it's one thing. But. At the New York Times Deal Book Conference on Wednesday uh, here in the city, she said that when it comes to mental health, quote, taking the likes away and taking that aspect away from it would be really beneficial for people. She said she's glad Instagram is is taking it really seriously. So That's really interesting. And she even said, you know, sometimes, you know, you have to be mentally strong when it comes to the likes because as much as you want them and you want people to comment, but then if somebody says something that's not nice, yeah. mm -hmm. then it gets to you. You try not to let it get to you, but it does. So she was saying, imagine if you are a young girl or if you're mm -hmm. a, young, a you know, high schooler or a middle schooler, mm -hmm. what that can do. Do so you guys I'll, read the comments? I do. Sometimes. I talk yeah. back to people. I try not to. You, you know don't? how I feel about it. I know. I, go I, don't, I do. I don't know what good comes from, you know. And Although, I, I think Instagram is a lot more positive a yes. than Twitter. I Twitter think so. is a place where, yes. where, where hope goes to die. But, <laughs> but what is, but what, I guess my, my question is, like, why do we care how many people like a picture? That's fair. But no, but fair? It's, like, it's a legit question. I like, feel like for you, right? or if it's get? for your job or if it's for what you do, it's currency, right? Is it? So, well, I think in a, if I find the positive aspect of it, there are a lot of people who find jobs or whatever without a middleman. Right. Because, oh, in fact, you're going to see that in our segment coming up. Mm, yeah. Actually, yeah. It's true, right? But I, I think this next generation, though, they have problems that maybe we don't relate mm, yeah. to as much as we should. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kim might have a point, and in a way it could be a form of activism if, if this works to help yeah. kids. Right lives better. That's, they're going through a lot. So. And when you yep. put the phone away, we even talked about this at night, she'll put her phone away. Mm. When you, just Even just taking the phone away for yeah. a second, for you a realize, second. Ah, yeah. that's kind of we, a good thing. You know we just did something as a group, and we didn't have our phones, mm -hmm. and it was very We had relaxed. so much fun. We did. Mm -hmm. We actually had conversations and eye contact yeah. and all that good stuff. And you know how your phone tells you your, your usage is up or down from mm -hmm. last week? I remember the week that I was on vacation. I just, I didn't have my phone on me, because it was like over there dead you yeah. know life. and my my thing said that my usage was down like 72% yeah. from the week before and it was yeah. Oh, that's why I had such an nice <laughs> yeah, it's like, it feels good. Now I just wasn't on my phone. You probably can add years to your life. I do sure you know? How do you unplug? What do you do? Um, well, we talk about it in our segment, yeah. so you're, you're going to have to oh, wait. Oh, oh, she did a tease. She did a tease. This is a pro, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. She, she served that one right up. <laughs> my co-host is sticking around. Woo. I love it. Coming up, we've all seen the Kissing Cam and Sporting Events, but you have never seen anything like what we're about to show you coming up after the break. Well Very strong. We'll be right back. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. right. Half of all U.S. adults 
now fully vaccinated. A huge lift is underway for one of the most celebrated cities in this country, Cleveland, Ohio. Yep. This is the greatest location in the nation. <laughs> We're having a baby. Wow. The big reveal is under the lid. Things are looking brighter, so we want to help you find the fun in 21. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando. Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Welcome back. So we're joined by Venus Williams this morning as part of our new job swap series. So on Monday, Al, you're going to swap with comedian Jim Gaffigan. That's right. Uh, Jim is one of the funniest funny. guys going. He's got five kids. He lives here and he's got a, an unbelievable comedy career. And so I kind of take over for him, including uh, at dinner with his children. Oh, you did? <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Do we see you do stand up? Uh, I actually you stand up here every day. I do. I do. A, a gym <laughs> kind of coaches me, and and I do a stand up comedy routine at the Gotham, he Gotham Comedy did. Club. Wait, that's so. I mean, he, he is legit. Oh, look, there you funny, go. Mm -hmm. Like Al's been funny for. You so know, did you 30, work on your years. material? Like, did you create a whole set, so to speak? Well, sort of, kind of. I mean, he, Jim helped me with some jokes, and then I, oh, I kind of went off. Yeah, because I didn't leave you in the dark by yourself. I helped that you with true. your forehand you and your backhand. You didn't. I didn't let you just go out there. Yesterday, we all played ping pong together for a series we have coming up. Um, her backhand is absolutely awful. I'm working on it. I mean, <laughs> so well, here's a question. <laughs> that's my fault. Well, hey. here's, here's a question, Venus. Is it the same principles for, t I mean, well, the table tennis and no. regular, it's two different things, right? Two different okay. things. So you could be good yeah. at one. So I could be amazing the yes, with exactly. the backhand. Well, the backhand is better at tennis. Yeah, it does not Stand by. <laughs> okay, so yesterday, before we get to that, yesterday we talked about Craig's morning routine, which includes an exactly four minute shower. He's I'm in clean, and out. I'm clean. I'm clean. He's in and out. Okay. Four seems good. But quick. since we have you here with us, we're talking about your daily routine. <laughs> it just, <laughs> it just, she wasn't four even back. judging. I can, I can, do you put a timer and the timer short, goes off right? you're out? Yeah, I get in, but you don't have a lot of hair. <laughs> so, and I use gravity that helps. Mm -hmm. So you're so. just in and out. In and out. And you're clean. Venus is thinking, why did I come here? <laughs> no, so, but we brought this up. He, uh, Craig was in Parade Magazine, but then you actually told CNBC about your daily wellness routine involving a ton of tennis mm -hmm. and what I learned from you gym time to the nth degree like we played tennis and I was like so that's your gym time right she's like oh no no now I'm going to the gym I'm like yeah. what exactly How long in the gym I spend as much time in the gym as I do on the court it's just it's half the battle wow right yes so is that like two hours and two hours no. four hours yeah. and four hours two hours and two hours wow, wow. what do you eat on the table. what do I eat yeah Right now, I'm eating great. Other times, not as well. But <laughs> normal. normally, like uh, mostly vegan. Like so. a raw diet. Um, not as much anymore. I did that. It's, it's a lot of work, and it's, it's, it's challenging on the road. But sometimes, mm. you know, I do like to add raw things. So maybe like a 30-70 ratio. What's your junk food? What do you, what do you eat? Uh, everything. <laughs> you eat a lot of those you're, cheese chips. And you're good in moderation. Yeah, and I'm, you were on keto for a while. Yeah, yeah. I'm still trying to do that. I, you know, I uh, uh, when I had the surgery, the hip surgery, mm -hmm. I kind of fell off, but I'm back on now. My mom yeah. does keto. Hi, mom. Yeah, Hi, mom. Your, you you got to have a cheat food, Venus. That's right. Oh, what's, yeah. What's your junk food? We talked about Donuts, this. Donuts, sweet tarts. Ooh. Oh, um, wow. You're the first person who's ever said sweet tarts. Cinnamon rolls. Oh. I you think, like cinnamon rolls. Uh, I love cinnamon Who doesn't like cinnamon rolls? Looking for the most amazing cinnamon rolls. I say that all the time. Can we do a segment on the most amazing cinnamon roll? Sure. When, when I come one. back. Save it for when I come back. <laughs> you know, you know Wait, be, if I'm invited back. Oh, oh you back. will be. You know you're what back. might put you off of cinnamon rolls? If they reverse 
you yeah. eating. Okay, have you seen this yeah. video yet? That's right, this is crazy. Okay, yeah, we talked this. about the kiss cam. This yeah. is like make you throw up cam. So uh, this has made the rounds this week. It's a montage put together by the Milwaukee Bucks. Instead of fans just eating, it shows them actually eating in reverse. And they put it on the big screen? And they put it on the big screen. Ew. So Wait, let me see. Why is that so funny Wait. to me? Why is that so funny to me? That's so disturbing. That's, that's hilarious. Wait, at first you don't realize what's happening. Ew. Yeah. It's so... It's like a magic trick. It is. Watch this, watch this. The, that's oh great. It's so disgusting. The Bucks told us that they introduced the reverse cam last year, but the CEO cracked a joke and said if the video gets negative feedback, please credit the New York Knicks. Oh, that's funny. Oh. I love that. That's funny. Wait. I can watch that all day. And why can't we can't stop staring at it? I don't know. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Welcome back to the third hour today. So we have Venus Williams here for our very first job swap. So when we decided to do this, I thought, you know, why not try something totally out of my co comfort zone, right? Mm -hmm. Tennis. So of course I went straight to the top to do that. And you do so much more than that. Thank you. You, you, you could have chosen Serena. So I feel honored <laughs> that you chose me. Bam! That's how the pros do it. Big sisters do. <laughs> Put me to work. Take a look. That's funny. <laughs> I am so excited today about my job swap with Venus. I have no idea how to play tennis, but I'm certainly gonna try. And as you'll see, she does a lot more than that. Let's do it. Hey, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm so Good. excited. I'm so excited to see you. Here's the thing, people underestimate how busy you are. Yeah, yeah. Right? you know, there's a little more to life than tennis. So right. you're actually gonna be me today. So you're gonna feel six foot one. Well, actually, I was just about to say, feel, so like these are the highest three. things I have. After today, you know, you're gonna be serving aces, you're gonna be designing. And we're gonna start. going on? Let's go, Hi. Our first stop, you. not the tennis court, Hi. but the boardroom, because yeah. Venus so dominates in the creative world too through her interior yeah. design yeah. business, V-Star. Okay. What we're gonna do today is really talk about doing a focal piece in the lobby of a residential building. Molly Haynes is a textile artist that Venus found through social media. How did it feel when Venus hit you up on like Instagram saying, hey, I love your work? I definitely took a screenshot of it and sent it to my boyfriend. <laughs> and I freaked out. I knew that she had her interior design firm, so it, it made a lot of sense, but obviously I was sort of surprised and excited. And now it. here you yeah. are. Yeah. So I'm going to be quiet. This is your meeting. Okay. So no, but we want, you're us today. So okay, you, that's you right. Can't, you can't be quiet. Okay, back in. After some design deliberation. So this one goes vertical. Inspiration boards are also crucial. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
it's time to make some really decisions. Tend to so now we have to make a final choice. <laughs> okay. So which piece are you most inspired by? Oh man, pressure. I'm pretending I live in a mansion and that there aren't kid prints all over my walls <laughs> because this was my first choice. Yeah. On a, on a wall and it's gonna just put right, it's gonna be gorgeous. Thank Can't you. wait to see where this project goes. Well, we'll keep you updated. Thank I'm you. ready for my next project. I'm proud, you, you've got potential. Okay. okay. So far so good, but now it's on to helping Venus, Venus with her other business, a fashion forward athleisure brand you're, you're called Eleven. Okay. All right, we're gonna talk about 2021 then, because we plan far in advance. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm just thinking about next week. Which we'll be tackling on the way to her tennis workout, because when you're this busy, every second counts. So what's the significance of Eleven? Eleven is better than 10, so it's about the effort you bring in life and never reaching your best knowing that you can always be better and learn more do more okay so now I heard you have some designs for me you're gonna sketch you're gonna give me your vision okay I'm gonna sketch it monochromatic linear I can't wait to see this <laughs> color blocking <laughs> paneling horizontal okay I think I'm ready you ready <laughs> okay it's so kind of a halter yes it's actually very good what please yeah. I like so how you were fearless mom said fear is the devil so Ooh. So bye-bye yeah. fear. Well, maybe not quite yet, because you can't job swap with Venus Williams without taking on tennis. Why do I feel like your little cousin? <laughs> and trust me, I'm no tennis pro. You're my hitting partner today in, in my comeback after being in the off season. Sweet. No stress, but no missing. The best ever. Oh, see and step. step. There you go. There you go. Oh, there you go. Okay. Got me running already. <laughs> She's quick. She's got potential. It's okay. I have another one. I love that I'm sweating and you're not moving. <laughs> We're saying C's to get degrees. Your swing is gonna be like a C. It's just a C, low oh. to high. Turns and out it looks like ball. I definitely oh, picked shoot. the right career. Bye. So I know I'm supposed to be helping her, but she just can't help it. She's helping me. It's hard. Well done. But and with a little patience from shoot. her and practice from me, things started feet. to come together. Yep, perfect. Excellent. Uh, Perfect. Walk After a long day trading places and not quite serving aces, almost. it's time for the job swap so to come to an end. And then I can't wait for you to I get come. to live your dream yes. next. You so. get to come on today's show. I can't wait. I hope I do you justice. Because you did me justice. You were all in. She was fearless. She was all in. Your way onto the set. <laughs> we had so much fun. That was so I funny. will tell you, I got back to the state. Was, was it the next day? I was yeah. like, I met a friend. Oh, They'll tell you. Because okay. like, it's hard to meet friends as yeah. an adult. It's true. You it had is. the ultimate Halloween because you, this oh, was on right. Halloween. Oh, that's right. I was Janet Jackson during the day, and people don't realize that then I stripped off the contour, and then we played tennis. Yeah, yeah that's a heck a of a day. day. I have yeah. a question. Any of Chanel's designs, whether the wall design or the outfit design, are you going oh, wait, to use? I have it. Are you going to use any of those? So we had to... Um, <laughs> Push it up to get it out into production right away. Yes. Wow. Fast fashion, folks. It's fast coming. fashion. Ladies, <laughs> this can be you. It looks like something Woo. could be for Chicago or something. The only what? problem are that she has two eyes. So. Oh, you're right. Why well, does she have an extra eye on what's... Wow, third eye blind. <laughs> Four eye this? blind. And then I tried to turn them into eyebrows. By the know. way, Venus, you, you more than did her justice. You did, this you is did. not yeah. This is not. She started easy. hitting well. I did. Know? If I would have had a little more time. Yeah. Now you see why we love See the, she had to get to the kids. C's so get I degrees. Get C's the degrees. Yeah. I like that. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. For the job swap. Thank you. And you so come back anytime. Yeah. Come yes. back anytime. Please. Thank, thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank and you. hi, Mom. Can we do Serena and I at the same time? Can sure. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. And, yeah. and your mom, too. Love you, Mom. We'll oh, my mom, the whole too. Thing. <laughs> and Monday, it's you and uh, oh, you Jim Gaffigan. The great Jim Gaffigan. I'll be watching. Swapping jobs and jokes. All right. We'll be right back. For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I can track this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Our across America journey here in Louisville, Orlando, Kentucky. Cleveland. 
reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. My most pinch me moment would probably be during the Olympics, just at the end being a champion at the Olympics. That's definitely a pinch me moment, but also like I earned it moment. My name is Venus Williams and I love being me. I love competing. The best advice I ever got was always compete. Serena Williams told me that. The thing people don't know about my relationship with Serena is that she's very protective. Even as the younger sister, she's very protective. Serena still copies everything that I do, but I also copy everything she does. <laughs> it's a codependency. My favorite part of the way I look is my physique, I'm like strong and I'm tall. I love being big and tall. I've always loved it. Oh my gosh, when I look at old pictures of myself, I think uh, different things. Sometimes I'm like, those are the days. Sometimes I'm like, why did I wear that? Sometimes I'm like, oh my God, you look good. And other times I'm, it's just so many mixed emotions. My favorite outfit on the court is pretty much usually every year my US Open outfit. It's a lot of fun, so I always think my best outfit is ahead of me. My best outfit is definitely ahead of me off of the court. I love design, I love creating, I love colors, I love making connections through things that are unrelated. I think that's my favorite part about design. To the young girls I've inspired, I say, thank you for inspiring me. The question I wish people would stop asking me is, what's it like to play your sister? The question I wish people would ask me is, do you want to go to karaoke? <laughs> No one ever asked that, and I can't figure out why. Hi everyone, I'm Chassie Post, and this is our new program, Shop All Day. And during each episode, we'll show you the hottest fashion and beauty items in Style Finder, buzzworthy and expert back products and influencer trends, and elevated essentials from Better Basics. Now, summer is in full swing, and we know you're ready to get out there. So we've got you covered with the best products to beat the heat, entertain guests, and look stylish while doing it. It's all things summer style today on Shop All Day. I'm Chassie Post, Yahoo Contributing Editor, and after a year indoors, it's time to revamp our summer style. I've got a ton of items that are gonna help you do just that. And see the QR code at the bottom of your screen? We're gonna make shopping super easy for you. Just use the camera on your smartphone and scan it for instant access to these products. We've also created a new text to shop feature. Simply text shop to the number below to shop all the products you're about to see. So let's jump right in with everything you need to create a complete stylish summer look. We're finally getting out of our homes and I've got the perfect tank top that's gonna help you do it and look great. Okay, this little tank top, it's got spaghetti straps, deep V's, but I cannot tell you the passion around this tank top, it is so popular. I can't believe how many people have written in and talked about what they love about it. I love that it's not just your average tank top. It's got these little button down details and the fabric. I mean, if you guys could feel this, I can't get over it. It's what I wanna wear all summer. And I love that you can style it in so many different ways. So, you know, you can take it and wear it just untucked over leggings or even over your bathing suit. And this comes in so many colors. It's got that great sort of new neutral, that soft pink and some brights and even lots of prints. But do I have another compliment to this tank top that has really become, I think, 
you know, a summer wardrobe staple. Um, I always look for a summer uniform, something that I know is never gonna disappoint me. And that is this adorable little scoop neck short jumpsuit. I mean, how fun is that? I have to say that one piece dressing, I am a huge, huge fan. I like to throw it on, not worry about it and go. And I've got to say, I love a wide leg short. So much more flattering. And surprise, surprise, it's got a pocket. Sign me up. Okay. I am really freaking out over this dress. This is probably my favorite summer trend. This is the tiered ruffle shift dress. And when I say I love it, I am not exaggerating. It is like a summer secret weapon. And here's why. You throw it on and oh my goodness, you're done. Like it's this statement. It's fun to wear. It feels like a party. It's got flounce, it's got volume. And I think this will be the theme really of this segment. Talk about versatility. You could throw it on as a cover up, but you put on a sandal, it'll take you to brunch or lunch or to a party. You guys will be seeing the silhouette pretty much everywhere. It looks really expensive and I've seen designer takes on this for a whole lot more. So get ready for the flounce dress, right? Okay, so I have some more good news. I have been on a quest to find a pair of denim shorts that I can actually wear. Okay, I see people wearing them, they look so cute, but every time I try them on, I mean, they're, they're too short or a hundred other reasons, right? So this is from Silver Jeans Company. This is a mid-rise boyfriend denim short. And I thought I had found them, I was the only one in the world who found them, but turns out they're a number one bestseller on Amazon, so a lot of people have found this to be their little denim short solution. But here is the checklist and why I'm into them. Number one, they're boyfriend style, so they're not too tight, so that they sit slouchy sort of on your hips. So that's a plus. Also, they've got this little rolled hem. So, you know, it's not frayed. Um, they've come in three different washes, two of them being distressed, but as you can see, it is a tasteful distress. They're not holes, you're not seeing through, so you feel totally appropriate. So these were a real win, and the price, it's affordable, it's great quality, and there's stretch in them. So, Eureka, that was a great day when I found these. Okay, so now let's talk about accessories. So, one of the shoes that everybody's talking about this summer is the espadrille. So these are from Scoop. They're the platform wedge espadrille. And here's what I love about this shoe. And I get really excited about platforms, A, because they're 9,000 times more comfortable than wearing a heel, and B, gives you about two inches more in height. And who doesn't want that? I mean, anytime elongation is involved, <laughs> I'm into it. But what I also like about these is, again, super versatile. They're part of my, um, you know, summer uniform. And with all of these colors, really they go with pretty much everything in your closet. Love how strappy they are, the ankle strap, and um, really, really affordable. So another big accessory uh, find, which truly blew my mind, are these boho earring set. Okay, it comes with a set of nine on-trend earrings in one set, and I gotta say, the whole set is the price of what you know an average pair of earrings is. Um, and what I really think is great about them is they cover you know sort of the big moments in earrings for this summer. So you've got some great little acrylic earrings. You've got the rattan, which is just a fancy word for straw. We're seeing rattan and straw throughout all accessories this season. I love like the tortoise big hoops and a statement earring will never steer you wrong. I mean, I love it. Throw it on with the jeans and t-shirt. You put your hair back, have a statement earring on and you are ready to roll. Um, another great accessory that you guys are gonna wanna add to your summer accessory arsenal is the Hera necklace from Bubble Bar. Okay, this is their number one best-selling necklace by far. And here's what people love so much about it. It's got this great paperclip sort of shape, which, I mean, we have really seen on 
tons of celebrities. And what's so great about them is this is sort of like the star of your neck party, right? So it's a great foundation piece, but it's all about layering this summer when it comes to necklaces. So um, this is really a great piece to get in on. And last but not least, this is the carpet bag, the fringed carpet bag. And this little bag, I mean, it's not your grandma's bag, right? It may have the vintage feel, but it hits, again, a number of megatrends this summer. It's got the fringe and macrame. It's got that carpet bag silhouette, which we saw all over the runways. And check out this little bamboo handle. So it's got the boho vibe. And it's from um, Scoop, a collection which is made exclusively for Walmart. And I was thrilled to see this collection because uh, there used to be a boutique that was super popular, always on trend, that fashionistas freaked out over called Scoop. And now they're doing a collection that is affordable with Walmart. So yay, yay, yay. We can get in on all the best summer trends. And there you have it, everything you need for a totally stylish summer look. So let's recap all the products I just showed you. Remember to scan that QR code at the bottom of your screen to see the products or simply text SHOP to the number below to get instant access. So we have the Blenco Women's Button Down V-neck Pink. We've got the Silver Jeans Company Women's Mid-Rise Boyfriend Denim Shorts. We've got the Summer Scoop Neck Sleeveless Romper the Fancy Inn Shift Dress with Pockets, the Scoop Espadrille Wedge Sandal, the Bohemian Earring Set, the Bobble Bar Here and Necklace, and the Scoop Fringed Carpet Bag. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, we've got Adriana Brock chatting with Mega Babe founder Katie Storino and featuring products for everybody. Stay with us. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Everybody, welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here, a very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> All right. Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Welcome back to Shop All Day. I'm Adriana Brock, Shop Today's Editorial Director, with our next segment, Influencer Trends. Today, we're talking all things summer style with Mega Babe founder, Katie Storino, and brand new author of the book, Body Talk. 
and see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? Just use the camera on your smartphone and scan it for instant access to all the products you're gonna see here. We've also created a new text to shop feature. Just simply text shop to the number below to shop all the products on today's show. So let's get started and meet our guest. Katie, hey, how are you? It's so good to see you. Congrats on your new book, Body Talk. How does it feel to be a published author? And tell me about this book and what it means to you. It's very exciting, especially because I feel like it's the culmination of the work that I've been doing on my Instagram about body acceptance and talking to women of all sizes about loving their body. This book is an opportunity to take those concepts and bring them off screen and do the work yourself. So we've got homework in there that helps you refocus and re, um, readjust the way you speak to yourself about your body. I love that. So what do you hope people reading this book take away from it? I just think that women spend entirely too much time thinking about their body, thinking negative thoughts about their body, wanting to change their body. And I, I hope that women read this book and that we start to experience a shift in the way we talk about ourselves, whether that's the way we talk about ourselves in the mirror or the way that in friend groups, we speak about our bodies or even the way you communicate about your body with your family. I love that. And Katie, you're also an entrepreneur, like no big deal. You have your own line called Mega Babe and it's kind of full of problem solving solutions. Tell me a bit, a, a little bit about what inspired that line. Well, I mean, it's 90 degrees in New York City right now and that is exactly what inspired that line. Um, I started Mega Babe because I wanted to create products that were both empowering and clean um, and going to solve problems that are not really discussed, like thigh shave. I mean, this is what I started the line with, our thigh rescue stick. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. It's, yeah, it's the best. And I, I looked for products like this before I launched Mega Babe and nothing was out there for women. It was all for men or athletes. And I wanted something that was really just made for me, just a person like me who's walking down the street and doesn't want chafe. Yeah, no, I mean, combine the sweat, the shorts, the summer heat, like this is the perfect summer product. And you also have a new one, it's called Dust Puff, which is so cool. I have the puff right here. The second product we created was actually Bust Dust, which is a talc-free powder um, for boob sweat. We hear feedback from our followers or our community, and they were like, we need a puff to apply the powder. So we went ahead and made our own Mega Babe oversized dust puff, um, and it actually helps apply powder really evenly, which I had no idea that that, that it would even do, but it's super cool, and I, I love our dust puff. I love that. And I've also heard amazing things about your deodorant, and you have a new iteration for summer, the Smoothie Dio. Tell me a little bit about this one. We wanted to make a different formulation for people who, I don't know, what something we found out during this whole process of making deodorant is that all armpits are not the same. It takes a different formula to stop mm -hmm. the stink for some people's armpits. So we wanted to make other formulas to help people transition out of aluminum and into a natural deodorant. And I love smoothie pits. It has a really great scent. I don't know if you've smelled it yet, but it smells like, well, duh, like a smoothie, but it's- Yeah, I love it. I, Ooh, I really nice love light. our deodorant scents. It's super light. And we also made a green deodorant, which is actually physically green, which I think is super cool because it has chlorophyll in it. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And so shifting gears a little bit into fashion. So you have these Instagram series, which you say kind of inspired the book, the super size my look, you have make my size, personal favorite, roll test. Um, so you have some style favorites here to share with us. We have first your, this nap dress that you're obsessed with. The nap dress is absolutely an ideal dress to wear in the heat because it's loose, it's flowy, it's comfortable, it fits, it's got stretch around the bust. I love the nap dress. And also the puffy sleeves kind of make you, make it look like you're dressed up um, and that you're kind of put together, even though surprise, it feels like you're in pajamas. Who doesn't love a pajama dress? Um, also, you have found like what I think is the perfect white t-shirt on Amazon. Um, please tell me about how you discovered that. 
Isn't it interesting that some of the basics that you think would be easy to find are actually quite hard to find? Yeah. And Amazon has this customization feature where you take a body scan of yourself on your cell phone and then you make a t-shirt that is literally like designed for your body. So I actually did that. I got a couple colors and I got a long sleeve one um, and I'm loving these t-shirts. I know you've been spending a lot of time in Palm Beach. Um, how has that influenced your style? I feel like you know, I always look at your Instagram, we're always looking at your street style and all the outfits you're creating and I'm I'm seeing a little bit of Palm Beach in there. I would say that I was always dressing for the life I wanted in Palm Beach. <laughs> I just wasn't in Palm Beach. So I've always been into colors and prints. I mean, this is my New York City apartment. Again, I love, I, I just, I love fun prints and I love when I walk into a room and it feels happy and bright and sunny. So um, I've never shied away from prints. Again, like so I'm wearing cute. this. I Super love cute, you. colorful set. That's my that's my vibe. I love it. I love your style. All right, Katie, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Uh, really excited to read your book and check out the new Mega Babe launches. So let's do a little bit of, of a recap of everything you guys saw right here. Remember to scan that QR code at the bottom of your screen. Just use the camera on your smartphone and scan it for instant access to all these products. We've got Katie Storino's new book, Body Talk, the Mega Babe Thigh Rescue, the Dust Puff, and the Smoothie Dio. We have also have her favorites. We've got the Amazon Custom Fit white t-shirt and the Hill House Home nap dress. That wraps up Influencer Trends. If you saw anything here you're interested in purchasing, we've also created a new text to shop feature. Simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we shared on today's show. Stay with us, Jen Fallick will be bringing you better basics for summer style. Hi everybody, good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. A huge lift is underway for one of the most celebrated cities in this country, Cleveland, Ohio. Yep. This is the greatest location in the nation. <laughs> We're having a baby. Wow. The big reveal is under the lid. <laughs> hey now. Things are looking brighter, so we want to help you find the fun in 21. <laughs> Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Louisville Kentucky. Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. Yes, in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you what you must know. The biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to Shop All Day. I'm lifestyle expert Jen Fallick, here to bring you some fabulous items that combine fashion and function to help you beat the heat and look cool while doing it. This is Better Basics. And see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it for instant access to these products. We also created a new text to shop feature. So simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that you're about to see. Let's jump right in with a few items to help you chill out. 
Okay, so we're starting with something that is not your average cooler. This Ice Mule Classic Cooler is a lightweight backpack for on-the-go cooling. It's got a double padded and ventilated sling strap that leaves both your arms free while you're out and about. I find that key, being hands-free, so important. The easy access interior opens wide with this accessible roll top design, so it lets you load up, put everything you need to put in there in there, and it's easy to find what you're looking for. This is a cool feature. It's actually fully collapsible, so it rolls up easy for storage. With this item, you get 24 plus hours of cooling. Plus, it keeps the interior temperatures nice and low for up to two days. It's leak-proof and waterproof. So it's really smart that it's got these welded seams and a zipperless closure, and that means it's not gonna leak. So it just kind of rolls up. You don't have to deal with any zippers that could break, that could open. This, you know, everything inside secure. And bonus, this cooler actually floats. So if you bring it on a kayak or you attach it to a paddleboard and a wave comes along, knocks it off, you can easily grab it. This is another nifty little product that'll instantly cool you down on the hottest summer days. This, you guys, is the Cool Gator. All you do with this is you soak it in water for 20 seconds and it traps the coolness. You don't need fridge, you don't need ice. So it's especially great when you're on the go. So if you're going for a walk or you're out for, you know, golfing, hanging out with friends outside, anything you're doing outdoors, it isn't bulky at all and it stays put. Inside here, it's got these non-toxic, super absorbent crystal polymers. They're sewn right inside the middle and they absorb hundreds of times their weight in water. And that's what helps to keep you cool all day. As the water evaporates, it keeps you nice and chilly, super cool. The band snaps, it's right here, it snaps for secure fit. And you can wear it around your neck, you can also put it around your head. There's all these different fun designs to choose from, so you can kind of collect a bunch depending on your personal style. There are so many fun print options. Really, there's gators for anyone and everyone in your family. It's also awesome for kids, you guys, because especially since they practically live outside, and if they're going to summer camp, they take this in the morning, it's gonna keep them cool all day, and they don't have to bring around an ice pack, you don't have to worry about cooling it again. It's gonna stay cool the entire day, and they love the style of Fun Gator. Now, this next product is near and dear to my heart because it is one of my all-time personal favorites. This is a packable hat. You can crush this hat. I mean, you guys, I've crushed mine many, many times. It pops right back up. Sometimes when you travel with a hat, put it in a suitcase, put it in a bag, it's ruined forever. Not the case here. Also, this has an adjustable cord inside, so it makes it fit all head shapes. It stays on securely, and it feels like it sides just for you. The fedora style is so flattering on every face shape. I honestly have yet to see one person not look amazing in this classic style. The materials, top quality. It really rivals any and every designer version out there that can be super expensive, and this one is an insanely good deal. So it's extra protection from the harmful sun for both your face and your scalp. And I love the material because it has a soft finish to it. Sometimes with hats that have texture like this, can get itchy. These have a soft finish and they feel amazing on. Here is another product that will keep you cool. This is the Land's End Women's Packable Visor and it is a must have for the bright summer rays. It's got a lovely texture, an adjustable Velcro band so you can keep the fit nice and snug. And this is not your average visor. Did you know what? You can roll it up nice and small, toss it in your bag, and you have got it made in the shade. There also is a sweatband on the interior for comfort. And again, this adjustable Velcro in the back makes sure that it's gonna fit you perfectly every time. And we've got two colors. Here's the navy, which is really fun and modern. And of course, we've got the classic natural texture. Next up, we're going from your head down to your feet. These cooling socks are a must have. I love these. I bought them for myself. I bought them for my daughter to take away to camp with her this summer because she always complains her feet get sweaty. Might be too much information, but it's the truth. These are gonna keep your feet cool all day long. It's got dry technology that wicks away moisture to keep your feet feeling dry and fresh. Really helps to prevent blisters. And there's also a cooling technology in there that keeps your feet cool throughout the day. Those two things together make a really pleasant experience on the hot, sweaty days. If you're going out for a run, your feet are gonna feel great. The low-cut silhouette is perfect under all sneaker styles because it disappears. It's flattering on the legs. But again, it's gonna work with every pair of shoes you wanna wear this summer. One pair of shoes, though, that you do not need socks with are these cork footbed sandals. 
They are super comfy, you guys. They come in tons of color options. And this is a huge trend as it is for the summer. We're seeing so many of these cork bed sandals. What I love about these is that they are gonna give you a perfect customized fit every time. Not only does the cork sole kind of melt to your foot, so you're getting the exact fit that your sole needs, but the adjustable straps on top mean that you can custom fit it to the exact shape of your foot. It's gonna stay secure. You don't strain your feet when you walk. And there's traction on the bottom, so you can go from the sand to the sidewalk seamlessly. It really feels like you're walking on clouds. And I gotta say, when I first saw these, I thought that they were really expensive designer brand because we've seen these from expensive designer brands lately. But they're a great deal. They look amazing, feel great on. And insider tip, if they get a little dirt on them, so easy to clean, just take a damp washcloth, wipe them off. And something else to know is that they tend to run true to size. And last but not least, have to share this amazing beach blanket. I am obsessed with this personally. I own it. It is in my bag with me at all times during the summer. This is the Wikipo Oversized Sandproof Beach Blanket. Not only is it more oversized than pretty much any oversized blanket that we're gonna find, what's great is that it repels sand and it comes in its own little tuck-in bag. It's attached so you can't lose it. This whole thing tucks right inside. There's enough room for like seven adults to hang out on this thing and it has little stakes in there. So you get to the beach, put it down, right inside the bag, there's four little stakes, pin it down, it's gonna stay put, looks cool, fun color option, and it's lightweight. I hook it with this little strap here. I have it pretty much around the uh, strap of my beach bag all summer long, because you never know when an impromptu picnic situation is gonna strike. The brand size, again, is a foot larger than competitor oversized beach mats, and it comes in several fun summery color combos to choose from. Get one, get a few, you will not regret it. And that covers it. Everything you need to stay cool and look cool. So let's recap all the products I just showed you, and remember to scan that QR code at the bottom of your screen. Just use the camera on your smartphone and scan it for instant access to these products. So we've got the Ice Mule Classic Cooler, the Cool Gator, the Packable Sun Hat, and the Packable Visor, the New Balance Cooling Socks, the Luna Cork Footbed Sandal, and the Sand Free Beach Blanket. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We hope these products will help you enjoy summer in style. And if you miss anything on the show, remember, just text SHOP to the number on your screen below to shop all the products that we shared on today's show. And tune in next week for another episode of Shop All Day. Happy summer. <gasps> Do you hear that sound? Mm, yes, I, okay, you know what it means? <laughs> it means it's time for May flowers, spring surprises. All right, this week we're so excited because we are surprising Lisa Manns. Lisa's from Seymour, Indiana. She's a substitute teacher who was nominated by her friend Bridget Longmire. Okay, so in 2016, Lisa was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And when she arrived home after a chemo treatment, she would come home to find packages from her friends and family on her doorstep. Yeah, she was so touched that this is what she did. She started a nonprofit. It's called Warrior Bags, and she did it with a few of her closest friends. Listen how sweet this is. So they filled bags like this right mm -hmm. here with things that a cancer patient might need while going through treatment. Blankets, chemo bands, peppermint, tummy drops, lip balm, mm. inspirational messages, anything somebody would need to feel better. So, you know, Lisa's so cool to be sort of paying it forward. And in the last two years, she sent over 600 oh. of these personalized bags to cancer patients all over the country making sure that nobody fights alone. Oh, don't we love her? So today we're happy to report that Lisa's cancer-free. Let's call her. Oh Should my gosh. Her? Yeah, she has no idea we're calling. All right, let's see. Let's ring you, ringy jingy. Okay, come on, Lisa. Lisa? 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 Hello? It's Hi, Hoda Lisa. and Jenna. How are you? <laughs> First of all, we just want to ask, is it okay if we record you right now? Is that all right? Because you're on live television. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> so we want to let you know that your friend Bridget nominated you. 
for our May Flowers Spring Surprises for all the hard work that you put into your nonprofit warrior bags. We actually have one of your warrior bags with us right now. We're so excited. <laughs> Lisa, are you surprised? I am very surprised. <laughs> oh, we love you, Lisa. We, well, ju we just want you to know that there's more. Yeah, there's a little bit more. We want to give you a second, but will you do us a favor and walk to your front door and take a peek outside? Oh, my. <laughs> Oh. I was supposed to be substitute teaching today, and they called and canceled me. <laughs> That's why they canceled. We had a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Lisa, Lisa. Okay. Now, Lisa's screaming because her friend Bridget oh is there who nominated God. her, her family. <laughs> By the way, you're also looking at co-founders of her organization, Mandy, Mary, and Joni. They came from oh all over God. the country. Some oh drove God. for four hours and yeah. five hours. They hopped on planes to see you. Oh. <laughs> but but oh. by the way, okay, are you ready? One more thing. That's not all, Lisa. Bridget has a bouquet, okay? And it has okay. a spe special message just for you. So will you open it and open the card and read us the message? This is incredible. <laughs> this is a donation for Warrior Bags! <laughs> okay, that's right, Lisa. Coles is giving you a $5,000 donation for Warrior Bags so that oh you can keep gosh, spreading hope to you. those who are battling cancer. You're amazing, Lisa. <laughs> You are oh, amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We, we love you. We can't. We knew all your friends would drive there to see you. Your family's with you, and it's just a beautiful moment. So we just yeah. want to wish you all the best, and keep it up. Yeah, we love you, Lisa. Love you, Lisa. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. A few weeks ago, I told you about my time at the 25th anniversary of Essence Festival held in New Orleans over the 4th of July weekend. More than half a million people go to talk about everything from fashion to politics. This year, I moderated a discussion with five mayors, all African-American women, and four of them are the first women, period, to hold the office of mayor in their cities. Here's a taste of that discussion now. Yeah, all right, I'm ready to chat. <laughs> Meet five mayors who don't just have a seat at the table where decisions are made about jobs, infrastructure, public safety, and more. They sit at the head. The women recently united on the Essence Festival stage to speak about their priorities while in office and the challenges of the job. Criminal justice reform is a huge topic in our city. Keisha Lance Bottoms, a fifth generation Atlanta native, began serving as the Georgia Capitol's 60th mayor last year. It's really uh, trying to engender hope, 
not just in government, but in the future of our community. In 2012, Karen Freeman Wilson of Gary, Indiana, became her hometown's first female leader. It is imperative that we focus on education in our city. Lovely Warren is in Rochester, New York. She's also the city's first female mayor, securing her second term in 2017. Then from Louisiana. Building a community of equity and inclusion and being very intentional about it takes up a lot of my time. There's Sharon Weston Broom, in 2017 sworn in as the first woman elected to lead Baton Rouge. The top, I would say, infrastructure, sewer, water, drainage, transportation options. While Latoya Cantrell is in her second year as the first female mayor in New Orleans 300 year history. We have a big national election obviously coming around the corner, but it all starts with local. How do you maintain engagement? I think the most important thing is for people to see a return on their investment. But just a reminder to people that elections matter. Yeah. As we look at what we're facing in this country, and I know in Louisiana and in Georgia where women's rights are under yes. attack, it's because elections matter. I, I would say accessibility as well. So we have 15 minutes with the mayor. Talking Anybody in the city can come in and talk to you for 15 city minutes? Any resident can come in. It's an opportunity for them to help, but for us to respond to their needs. Anything yeah. in anybody's city specifically, as far as grassroots organizations, either you can start yeah. or and if, it, if it's effective. Certainly after 2016, with the killing of Alton Sterling, killing of police officers, then the great flood, we were a city that was in trauma. And so now we have connected to grassroots organizations throughout the city who are helping in the space of stress and trauma. And in Rochester, we have um, really connected with our faith community. We have clergy on patrol where our actual clergy go out with our police officers. And what are yes. they doing? They're knocking on doors and actually talking to our residents. They're praying for people if they need prayer. I initiated a mayor for a day program where I've chosen three young, young girls one in middle school, two in high school, so that they can see themselves, you know, in who we are and the leadership that we provide. If we don't sit in these offices and create opportunities for folks who haven't had them before, then we're not doing what we were sent to do. Our conversation continued off stage. How do you tap into your power? What would you say? But I think the most important gift that we have as women is the power of intuition. And when we harness that, I think it's a game changer for our communities. What keeps you up at night? You've got major issues happening right. in the city of New Orleans. Well, that's what keeps me up at night, the 114-year-old pipes that can burst at any given time, making sure that there's clean water, accessibility to transportation so people can get to it from work. It's, it's real. It's real life, the struggle. How many of you are, a show of hands, how many of you are a first in your position? It gives me chills just thinking about that. Is there pressure with that? Oh, of course there's a lot of pressure. You break it down a door and you want to leave it open so that someone is able to come behind you. And a final note on how mayors work on a local level may inspire leaders nationally. The federal government uh, has some major challenges, and so people look to mayors. They look to all of us to get the job done. We can't shut down, and we don't shut down. We, we drive the change, even in spite of the difficulties at the federal level. So if you want to see something happen and see something different happen, particularly the scalability that's needed at the federal level, look to cities. And I think that in this election more than anyone, domestic issues will drive the agenda. All of the women recognize they won't be mayors forever, so they're doing what they can to leave their mark, if you will. And Gary, a new mayor, will take over in a few months. I think the takeaway here is beyond politics, mm -hmm. we just have to acknowledge, like I said, four of the five of those uh, women were the first female mayors elected mm -hmm. in their city's history. You know, one of the city's 300 years. When I tell my story, I don't tell it for people to feel sad for me but to see a strong person and for them to know that they could also be, you know, as strong. Shalom Black's story began as a young girl growing up in Nigeria. My mom had a restaurant where me and my siblings would basically help her out. I think the only days that we had off was Sunday, and that is when we go to church. My mom would cook a whole big pot and we all ate together. So that has always just been special, you know, to me.
When she was nine years old, a mishap in the restaurant changed her life forever. I decided to go lay under one of the big tables. And my mom has a routine where when she's done frying for the night, she would take the big pan of hot oil and place it next to, you know, the table. And then out of nowhere, the big pan of hot oil literally just like fell on top of my younger sister and I. Shalom sustained third degree burns on more than 20 percent of her body. After four months in the hospital and another year recovering at home, she and her sister moved to the U.S. to receive better care. I was like, okay, cool, I can have a whole new start and probably have friends that would care for me and see me be on my scars. But things didn't really change, it kind of got worse. She found comfort and inspiration online. I was just going on YouTube to watch music videos, and then one day I just stumbled upon a makeup video, and I was just amazed. Just picking on things that uh, people would do and then practice it on myself. So I decided, like, you know what? Let me give this a try. Hey, guys. Hi. Shalom's makeup transformation videos went viral, not only for her artistry, but for her authenticity. In one 2018 post, Shalom recorded her crush taking off her makeup and wig, layer by layer. Oh, that's dope. <laughs> I have to give you a hug. <laughs> I decided I want to take that power back where I'm not hiding. It was very scary for me, but it felt great to this day. When I meet a lot of people, that's the video that people say, this is what I found you from. This is why I'm subscribed to you. People are not just subscribed to me because I know how to do makeup, mostly because of how I made them feel. Today, Shalom has amassed more than 1.5 million subscribers on her YouTube channel. Remember to always be your own kind of beautiful. Shalom's main message, beauty and confidence come from within. I don't wake up every morning be so happy about having a scar, but I don't think I would take it back. I believe that everything happens for a reason, and this is the reason that it happened, and I am serving a purpose with it. So I, yeah, I don't think I would be the same Shalom. It's amazing. So inspiring to have as many followers as she does, no. you know, just to, to, to show that you are beautiful, That's and right. it comes from you the know, inside. In so many different ways. Our Across America journey Here in Louisville, Orlando, Kentucky. Kentucky. Cleveland reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is from, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nike News with Lester Holt. Have you ever spotted someone walking down the street, admired their style and thought, how do they make themselves look so fashionable? I know. Well, that is exactly what happened with two friends from San Francisco. And that conversation led to a passion project and a book. It's called Chinatown Pretty, celebrating the fashionable seniors living in their neighborhood. Take a look. 
The Chinatown Pretty style is really this patchwork of contrast, a lot of pattern clashing and a big mix of colors. San Francisco-based photographer Andrea Lowe and writer Valerie Liu have always been awed by the eclectic styles of senior citizens in the city's Chinatown. We'd just look at each other and be like, did you see that? Where did they get these articles of clothing and accessories? And how did they, they compose these next level outfits? In 2014, after a dim sum date where they spent more time focusing on the fashionable elders than the food, the two friends started Chinatown Pretty, a project celebrating the street style of seniors living in the neighborhood. That's nice. With a Cantonese translator, the duo takes laps around the area and stop fashionable locals for a photo and an interview. And we'll just say, good morning, Joe san and usually just compliment them on the thing that catched our eye. And from there, you know, we try to ask how their day's going and let the conversation evolve naturally. Jacket's good. Very warm, very good. And after seven years of doing gallery shows and articles for local magazines, Chinatown Pretty became a book featuring more than 100 senior citizens from six Chinatowns across North America. One person we met, was this woman in a magical alleyway called Ross Alley in San Francisco. And when we asked her to lift up her fleece pants, there are these pink socks that read, my favorite salad is mine, which is like the last thing you would expect on, on someone who's like in their 80s. I think that's a running theme throughout the outfits is um, the element of surprise and delight. Through fashion, Valerie and Andrea were able to connect and unlock countless stories. It's a demographic that doesn't get seen or heard a lot. And, you know, it's important to share their stories. A lot of them have immigrated, leaving their families behind, been through war, are refugees, the list goes on and on. And there's so much resilience that we can learn from them. One senior featured in the San Francisco chapter is 87-year-old Dorothy G.C. Kwok who's also known as Polka Dot. She works as a tour guide and documentary film researcher, and in her free time, distributes food pantry deliveries to neighbors. I mix and match whatever is given to me to make outfits out of them that is comfortable for me. I don't follow any fashion. I have my own fashion. If I'm called Polka Dot, I should have at least one outfit. She was born and raised in Chinatown, and she has a lot of history there. It was very difficult because we were discriminated my father had died when I was 12 years old. With seven siblings, it became very difficult to survive. But I got married after the second year of college and decided to move. But I was determined to come back someday where my roots are. Dorothy was walking me through Chinatown and telling me stories of her childhood there or growing up. And I've learned so much from her. I was so proud and so surprised that people love it. The writing that Valerie has commentaries on really explains a lot about people and really gives a highlight that immigrants especially, they have a life that can be full. The first quarter of 2021 saw a 169% increase in anti-Asian hate crimes. It is Andrea and Valerie's hope that Chinatown Pretty can shine a light on the humanity, understanding, and joy that can occur when we stop and connect with one another. I think that Chinatown Pretty is one example of how we can perhaps change or expand the general public of who and what we are by revealing some of our personal stories that go with the fashion. We are living beings and that we are as human as anyone else. They're in their 80s and 90s and living their best urban lives. They're meeting with friends in the park. They're playing chess. They're watching opera. We go by Popo Ho Leng, which is, damn grandma, you look good in Cantonese. Damn, Grandma, you look good. They do look that good. is awesome. Oh, God. I hope you guys check this out. Check out Chinatown Pretty. Harper's Bazaar, known for being first in fashion with a history spanning over 154 years, is being recognized for another first the magazine's first black editor in chief, Samira Nasser. Welcome to Harper's Bazaar. Oh. So it's all on this floor? Yes, so this is the edit side. Okay. I grew up in the suburbs of Montreal, and for as long as I can remember, I've always been in love with fashion magazines. What was it about it for you that you loved? The fantasy, the escape, the possibility, the dream. I grew up in a very loving community. 
but no one really looked like me. My father's Lebanese, my mother's from Trinidad. They were both immigrants, and my parents were divorced when I was very young. And so magazines were just a place where I could be transported to another world. That world would soon know her name, but her path to the top was far from typical. You went to NYU. Yes. What did you think you were going to do? I did my undergraduate degree in philosophy, and I thought, I'm going to go into biomedical ethics. Yes, I said it. I wanted to go into biomedical bi ethics. ethics. Yeah. Okay. But her journey took a turn. An internship at Mirabella Magazine opened her eyes to a new world. Did you have a moment where you were enlightened and you thought, you know what, this is where I belong? I remember as an intern being asked to be on set at Mirabella, but to just see how everyone on set worked to create these images and, and the creative energy, it was exhilarating and thrilling and something that I wanted to lean into and follow. And that's exactly what she did, landing jobs at American Vogue, Allure, Elle, In Style, Vanity Fair, and then a phone call that changed her life. When did you know for sure that you'd be the next editor-in-chief? We were in lockdown. I was in Prospect Park with my son, and I got, a, I got the call. My son was like, Mama, get off the phone. And I was like, I need a minute. The journey in the fashion industry probably wasn't necessarily easy. No. Did you ever feel like a fish out of water? Did you ever feel out of place? Or did All you the always? Time. Yes. I love this industry. This industry has afforded me a beautiful life, and I've traveled and I've grown and I've learned so much. But at the same time, there weren't a lot of people who look like me when I was coming up. Now determined to use her experience and create space for others. We are at the intersection of high fashion and culture, but still there's so many stories to be told and there's, there's a level of humanity that we can bring to those stories. And to be able to create a space and to share our platform and our pages with individuals for them to tell their full stories and to be seen in the pages, much like I wanted to be seen when I was little, kind of goes back to that ideal. Have you ever thought about the girl who is like you all these years later, who she picks up your magazine, and it's her escape. It's her time to dream. You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> I do. I think about not just little girls. I think about little boys. I think about people. I think about individuals. And I hope they can lean into their dreams. You did that. Thank you. That's all I got. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs> I hope I can inspire people to dream big. So great. Well, like so many women, Samira stays busy as a single mom. Years ago, she made the decision to adopt a beautiful boy, and you heard her talk about that moment and how it was a surreal moment when she got the call about this big new job while she was at the park playing with her little boy all those years later. They celebrated together. It was like in that moment, everything kind of fell into place. So she's wow. a she real, is. Isn't she wonderful? She is really inspiring. Oh, my Harper's, goodness. Harper's picked right. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Yes, yes, yes. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready, are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. 
Right now in the city of Los Angeles, it's estimated that nearly 60,000 people are living on the streets. There's one woman who is reaching out to the homeless community in a very unique way. She's sharing her talent for hair and makeup in an unexpected place. Right here where the cars start, baby. On the streets of Los Angeles, Shirley Rains is on a one-of-a-kind mission to help the homeless. I think it's 22 people in the line for hair color, baby. The founder of the nonprofit Beauty to the Streets travels every week to Skid Row. It's one of the poorest and often the most dangerous parts of Los Angeles. I feel like I have something to give. The streets that are very violent, the streets that nobody else wants to deal with, the streets that nobody wants to come to. She says her mission is simple, deliver meals, beauty services, and even showers to hundreds of homeless people in need. How's your week been, baby? The 52-year-old mother of six lost a child and suffered from grief and depression for years. I understand the pain that the people on Skid Row feel. Even though they may not have buried a child, I understand the emotion of trauma. I understand the emotion of sorrow. She wanted to give something back to others who also struggle in life, so she started feeding the homeless in 2016. Let's wait for this one to dry. You want your eyebrows done? But all the women could talk about was her hair color and makeup. I'm a hood stylist. Yeah, when you learn on your own, that's not a hair stylist, but a hood stylist. Shirley's beauty skills are self-taught. You guys want a, a haircut that will give you a number? But that doesn't stop hundreds from lining up each week. I looked at her eyebrows and I said, I want some of those. <laughs> some of Miss Shirley's eyebrows. <laughs> you guys made my day, for real. Do you want a glitter stick for your eye? You can do it later if you want. It's a little glitter stick, it goes on top. It's well, okay. thank God for you guys. Oh, you good. The trip to Skid Row actually starts the day before, 30 miles away in Shirley's tiny one-bedroom apartment. This is truly headquarters. Yes, this is where everything happens. Me these boxes. Volunteers load up their cars with hygiene bags, a portable salon, hot water, a shower, and catering for at least 300 people. We got um, turkey meatloaf for you guys. We got mashed potatoes and cheese and vegetables. Some real food, some real food. I've been up since 5.30 in the morning cooking it. It's cooked by me. Shirley's hot home-cooked food feeds the body, but she says it's the basic salon services and hygiene that feed the soul. They're not mean, they're not bad, they're not worthless, they're not alcoholics, they're not drug addicts. They're broken, as I am broken. And we all show and display our broken emotions in different ways. It's just that simple. It's not a complicated thing. Shirley and the Beauty to the Streets volunteers are guarded by the community organization Fighters for the World. When they hear us coming, when they see us coming, they know that they're going to be pampered. They're going to be taken care of. We're always here for them. It's a cool feeling. As crazy as it is, this is our day of peace. I know that we're sounds we're weird, as hectic as it is, and some of the stuff we have to deal with, but we're all street people, and so we're very familiar, and this is like calm to us. Yeah, it's right, like yes. our normal life. <laughs> right, right, right. It's a happy Saturday. It's a happy it's a Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Just happens to be on Skid Row. <laughs> <laughs> For the last 25 years, Shirley has worked in medical billing, and she and her volunteers fund Beauty to the Streets using their own money. They also wow. use donations from yeah. Shirley's followers on Instagram. So many people want to help God her. God bless Shirley. Yeah. I've been to you know, Skid Row a couple of times. I did a piece out there last year. It's one of the great dreams in this, in this country. And the, the fact that it still exists in 2019 doesn't say anything about those broken people. It says a lot about who we are, I think. It's been that um, way for decades. I know. Yeah. I know. So we'll thank God for Shirley. Hi, hi guys, you look great today. We hope you are enjoying your Thursday and happy first day of July. Welcome back, it's another edition of our digital show. Today in 30, we've got a lot to get to, so let's break it down, Hoda. Yeah, a lot of breaking news. First, the fallout from Bill Cosby's release from prison. We will bring you reaction from his accusers and also our conversation with one of the special prosecutors in his trials. You're gonna to wanna to hear exactly what she has to say.